Okay, we are live. All right, we are live. Me and my lovely assistant, uh, Sunkist. Party the people. Here. Um, hey, did you have the valet parking? You know, did they, did they take care of you? They put the, you in the VIP lounge. Hey, listen, I party all the way here. <laughs> they dropped me off right at the door. I said, "Hey, my twin said right here." They went up a little further. I said, "Back it up a little bit." Then That's they hit right. the right spot. I said, "Hit the buttons. Let me out." <laughs> you, you know what? All seriousness, all seriousness, Sunkist. If I was that big, I would give you the first class treatment. I would. You're so sweet. I believe you. <laughs> I would. You're so sweet. Oh, you know, I believe you. Too. But hey, in the future, you know, if I get it, you got it. <laughs> Same here. Same here. Whichever uh, comes, whoever comes first, I see you coming first. So I'm going to hold you to it first. <laughs> okay, it's a deal. Um, okay, I want to welcome everybody to uh, tonight's live. And uh, this is going to be a fun live. Um, I, I want to take two men, two black men, right? And they both speak about black women, how much they love black women, right? Um one is uh, Ralph Richard Banks. He wrote the book, Is Marriage for White People? And uh, you got Umar Johnson. He, he is a, a black nationalist, a pan-African. Um, he's pretty much a segregationist, <laughs> I would just say. That's my opinion. <laughs> but, um, you know, he's pro-black. Okay, we'll, we'll keep it there. No disrespect to the man, okay? Um, but you got two black men, right? Uh, Richard Ralph Banks is a black man married to a black woman that wrote the book is marriage for white people. And he breaks down the statistics and he encourages black women to look towards other races of men, um, whether it be white or different because of the numbers. And uh, Umar Johnson, he, he, he thinks black women should be only loyal to black women, okay? Um, so you got two opposing opinions. And uh, both men, you know, are, are they both have platforms. They both have, uh, you know, big followings, you might say. So we're going to break it down. And you guys can form your own opinion. Um, Mine might be different from yours. Yours might be different from Sunkist. Um, we're just going to speak freely and tell you what we think. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a fun night, I think. I think it's going to be good. And I'm so sorry that tonight was later than what I uh, posted. Um, you know, my wife had to have the, uh, the studio a little longer than she wanted to because of work. So it's not her fault, but that, that kind of kicked us back. And then I had internet problems of all things. So um, we're a little late. Hey, hey, uh, Corey, um, Carolyn R., good to see you, young lady. Camille Jameson, good to see you. Michelle Hernandez, CC, hey, CC. Um, Good to see you, ladies and, and gentlemen. Good to see all you guys. Um, Carolyn Dreams, Caroline's Dreams, good to see you. R. Howard, good to see you, all you ladies, all you gentlemen that are, have come on. And I want to say this. Hey, guys, um, most of the channel is black women. That's true. But you know what? There's over 500 men subscribed to me right now. And that's white men. That's that's a little bit of Hispanics, a little bit of Asians mixed in. So we're growing when it comes to men, and, and that's awesome. And, and there's even some black men that support us in the shadows. And, and I love these guys. They they really do care. They have a big heart. They go. They move beyond their egos. They're they're men of God, and they're 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 supporting us in the chat in the shadows. They they will not. Be there openly, but that's that's true love. That's tr true manhood. But, you know, tonight I'm excited. Tonight I'm going to have two black men. Um, you know, you would say both of these men are successful. 
Richard Ralph Banks is a, a Harvard Law professor. Um, you know, he, he went to the most prestigious colleges. And the man is on, on the top. When it comes to high-value men, this guy is it. Okay? Um, and uh, this guy, I, I think, has character. He don't put black men above white men or vice versa. He, I, I think he looks in things as truth. He looks at things as, you know, you know what what's really happening. He looks at statistics. He don't. He's not race loyal, just cause to be race loyal. Now Umar Johnson, he he's successful. He's a big guy. Um, he's made very a, a lot of uh, speeches out there. I don't agree with it, him on a lot of things because he generalizes white people and he tells black people what we're like. And I don't think the man has a clue, but you know, he's a leader in his community. You know, I'll do respect to him too. Um, I have no hate for him or any of these two black gentlemen. Okay. These are black men. These men, you know, have a platform. These men have a voice. These men, you know, but here's the thing. We're going to listen to him speak. You give your opinion. You research both these men. Don't listen to what I think or what Sunkiss thinks or anybody in the chat. Research these guys. Mm -hmm. Find out the truth, okay? The truth is like a double-edged sword. It's going to cut us all, right? It is. Um, but anyway, um, I'm going, to, I'm going to show you these two videos, and we're going to break it down, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to have a good time tonight. Hey, and I want to say this, too, guys. Hey, guess what? This channel has reached 6,000 subscribers. 6,000. I, I mean, it's amazing. And you know what? I'm humbled. I don't deserve 6,000. I don't deserve 60 people. I'm going to be honest, but you guys made it happen. And, and I, I'm ecstatic. I'm, I'm humbled. I I'm appreciative. And, and you know what? I, I just, I'm in awe. And I talked to Sunkist early. I just, I don't know. I just, I want to break down and cry because I don't deserve this, but um, I just wanted to put that out there. And uh, you know, you guys motivate me. Oh my God, this is, amazing but uh thank you so much um everybody that follows me everybody that believes in my message thank you and those that don't believe god bless you too um you know we all have a difference of opinion um you know but i i'm just i I'm, I'm i'm floored i i broke down with my wife today and i i had tears i said I said, Sandy, I don't understand why these people would even subscribe to me. I'm not well-spoken. I'm not entertaining. You know, I, I'm not good-looking at all. I'm just average at best. That would be, I'm not even that. But people, you know, you gave me your attention. You gave me your love. And I, I appreciate it, guys. I do. Oh, my God. You don't even know. Um, seriously. I, we are I mean, rooting for you. We see that we see real. We don't recognize it's real. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. But anyway, I just want to thank you guys. And, and I want you to know that I'm humbled. I don't deserve a tenth of what I got. Okay. I'm gonna be and I'm being honest. That ain't just me telling you this. This is true. I don't deserve a tenth of what I got. But that just shows that God is good. That just shows that God is a loving God. And uh, I, I appreciate it. I'm thankful. You're good. You're you're doing good. You, you're you're saying, keep telling people to do what he wants them to do, which is look at other people outside of their race. That's what you're yeah. saying. You, that's what he wants us to do, not to be racist, not to be prejudiced. So he's going to bless the effort. That that's right, and you know what? Hey, and the way I look on it, and, and some people think I, I I have a channel that goes in on black men. I don't. 
there, there are black men I have that I have the utmost love and respect for that have molded my my life. You know, I, I'm not a respecter person, nor should I be. And neither is God. Um, you know, no man is better than the other man. You know, what makes us successful or, you know, a failure in our life is our choices. You know, and, and here's the thing. Um, and, and that's what I want to point out. And I want to open people's eyes to interracial relationships. Because you know what? Black women, you are doing amazing things. And you know what? Us as non-black men, us as, you know, men of no color, whatever you want to describe us as, we notice you. We see you. We love you. And don't, don't think it's it's gone unnoticed, okay? And, you know, I would say to the, the black men out there that are making things happen, taking their, care of their families, Russell Wilson, shout out to him. You know, Denzel Washington, and yeah, Barack Obama, he's been married for years. I don't agree with them politically, but shout out to you, brother. You know what? You men are making it happen. And, and I'm telling you, you know, truth is truth. And, and men that do the right thing with the women that they're around and love and respect them, you will be uplifting from God. I, I'm just going to say that. And... Uh, you, you know, you're, you're setting the standard. Can I I'm, say I'm this too, Brent? You're yes. using a book. You're using a book as a reference from a black man. As to uh, your reference um, talking point to help us to black women to appreciate another black man. Because a lot of black women are dating out out of hate and anger and resentment. Mm -hmm. And you're taking that and saying, let's just take that energy and let's put it where it should be. And not yeah. in that black man, but let's put it where what it comes to his actions, and let's look at his actions and call that taboo. And let's yeah, just it, look at people and say it, no. And you're using like we talked about before, black love and using what you the ones you just shouted out. You don't have to use them as a foundation. So again, no. you know what I'm saying. So it's not again. You're it's all about balance, and so you're doing that. You don't have to use this man as a re as, as a reference, yeah. but you're doing just that. And you don't you you could just be selfish and just keep it on non black men, but you're not. And you wonder well, why you're being blessed again. Only a humble man would not see that because you're humble. It's take it will take oh, us to show you that. But the thing is, you don't have to use that. Black women are just we just want to date out anyways because of what we've been going through. But you don't have to take this and say, well, let's just let's just pause and let's just take that energy and do what I just said a second ago. There you have it. And we thank you for that, too. You know, I appreciate that. Yeah. And what I'm saying is when you when you choose a man, look at his character because mm -hmm. genetics, color has nothing to do with a man's character. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes. Um, you know, traditions, sometimes uh, culture gets involved, sometimes our environment. And and some men have more of a, how can I say this? A better opportunity, right? Okay. Um, and the thing of it is, and I'm speaking to men, if you want to be the top guy, it's up to you. You, you can win. When it comes to men, but it, it's the hardest battle you're going to fight. You're going to have to sacrifice everything you got for the woman you love. You're going to have to put, you know, the woman and kids above yourself. And you're going to have to make her your wife. And, and here's the thing. It, it, race has nothing to do with it. But here's the thing. Culture, culture and the environment does. You know, sometimes you might have to break away from your own culture and go back to what God intended. Read the Bible. What's God say about women? They're a treasure. They're a blessing. You know, you have a good wife. You have a good thing. You have favor with God. Okay. Um, I, I just want to put that out there. Um, and, and here's the thing. In a perfect world, us as men, we would embrace each other and be brothers and 
uplift the women in our community and make them, you know, the queens that, that they are. And I'm talking all races because look, ladies and gentlemen, we're in America. We're the same national nationality. You know what? We're, you know, we're in the same country. We should lift up each other. We should not be divided. You know, we shouldn't be racially divided. We should not be, you know, class divided. We should be brothers across the board. We, we live in the same place. And you say, well, we didn't choose to be here. We were brought here. Hey, you know what? I was born here like you. I didn't choose this. But look, we're not the same people in the past. We are different people. Here's the thing. We're here together. We could fix this if we, you know, cling to God and come together as brothers and sisters and become one nationality. Here's the thing. Dr. Umar Johnson, he's a black nationalist, right? He, he believes black people should stay with black people. You know what? I compare that man to David Duke. He's a white nationalist. He thinks black, white people should stay together, right? And, and they're two different men, but they share the same ideology. It's a segregated mindset. And before I get started, let me tell you, we need to throw that crap away. And I'm telling you, I'm a nationalist. I am. I'm pro-American. I believe America is the greatest country ever. Do we have sin? Do we have corruption and destruction? Do we have garbage? Yes. But the idea is perfect. The men are sinful. Here's the thing. We need to come together as men and women in our country and live together, love each other. And whatever your preference is, love and respect that person. And I'm telling you, what whether it's, you know, black men, they, they should accept black women marrying white men. And you know what? Us as white men, if white women love that black man, let her have them. Because that's what they want. Here's the thing. I, I'm a true nationalist, but I don't segregate myself to just white people. I love black people, Asian people, Hispanic people. I love my country. That makes me a nationalist, right? But we got black and white nationalists that want to be separated, living in a good, you know, a segregated mindset. Oh, they're evil. They're awful. And back and forth. And, and let me tell you. We both came from Adam and Eve. We both are sons of Noah. And I'm telling you, you know what? The, the three races of men it is uh, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. But they had the same mother and father. So we're not a different race. This, this different race crap, it, it's, it's false. It's a lie. You know, look in the Bible. I, I'm telling you guys, we're, we're the same race. Oh, you say, well, white people did this. Yeah, we were you. Well, I'm not going to say we because I wasn't there back in the day. But yeah, mm -hmm. white people did some evil stuff. Yes, I get it. I, I get it. I, I'm not going to dispute it. But here's the thing. We're the same race. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some got dark skin. Some got light skin. Hey, that's how God made us. God loves different people. God loves different, you know. Different looks. God loves different. And, and that's not bad. It's just the sin in man that made us corrupt. So what I'm saying to you guys, and, and I, I, this is off the subject of tonight's show. Here's the thing. What, make, what defines you as a person is your choices in your character. What, what you look like has nothing to do with anything it's what's in your heart and your character mm -hmm. and your choices that defines you as a person so if we can't come together as brothers and sisters you know what we're going to destroy each other and it don't matter who did mo the most evil to one another the fact remains we're all in this together we're all brothers and sisters until we can heal and make it right. You know what? We're going to always be fighting. We're always going to be looking at each other. Oh, well, this. There's nobody superior than the other. There's not. 
you know, and I'm not excusing anything that Europeans have done in, the, in this world. But if you really study world history, men are evil. We're all mm -hmm. born in sin. And, and I'm telling you, if we don't, we could live such a better life if we just come together and just love each other. You know, and I'm going to say that before we start the show, because I want people to understand that I, I, I'm not, I'm not here to lift up white men and say black men are bad. I'm not. I'm not mm -hmm. here to say that black women are better than another group of women. Yes, I have a preference for black women. I love black women. I, I have forever. My wife is black. She's been, we've been married over 27 years. And yes, I do have a love for black women. And people say, well, you pedalize black women. You put it, you know, and some will say I'm pandering. I'm not pandering. I'm telling the truth. I'm speaking what I love. And, and when it comes to white men, let me tell you something, people. Us as white men, we pedalize our women. We put them on a pedestal. That That's our history. That's our culture. We do it. My grandfather did it. His grandfather did it. My dad did it. And I'm doing it. The only difference with me is it's not a white woman up there. It's a black woman. Mm -hmm. Same thing's going on. Okay. So I, I just want to put that out there. I know I'm kind of ranting on this because I think in a perfect world, we would come together as brothers. And who cares if you're a white man that loves a black woman or a black man that loves a white woman or it, as long as the love is pure, as long as you really love that person and you want to make that person your wife or husband, it's okay. Mm -hmm. It is. You know, it it's, is. I, I hate this us against them type of mentality. Mm -hmm. I do. I hate it. I despise it. And I see it in the world every day and when i say how much i love black women you know i get hate i i get people telling me you're pandering oh yeah you're you're full of crap no black women ain't that good from black men black men are are tearing black women down to try to prove a point to me that to me is garbage that's crap what are we doing seriously mm -hmm. You know, I seen beauty in black women. I fell in love with black women. You know why? Number one, because I see truth. Number two, I was a child, so I, I knew what love really was. And, and number three, I was never told that I couldn't love somebody that didn't like, look like me. And, and number four, I'm a an individual. I choose my own path. I don't live like people that look like me, I choose my own way. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing, guys. It's so simple. You love who you love. And you know what? If you love a certain woman, express it. You could call me a pander all you want. But you know what? I dated black women when I was 16 till I got married in 94. And you know what? I've been married to a black woman for 27 years. You know where my heart is. You know where my love is. And I'm not saying that one woman is better than the other. I'm not. But it should tell you that we can love somebody that's not like us, looks like us, that's not in the same community, that's someone that's different. We don't understand, but we see the true beauty. We see the true love. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And anyway, okay, I, I'm just, uh, I'm getting in the breach. <laughs> no, I'm sitting here going, continue, Brent, because I'm going, yeah, you're hitting so many points. And the thing I, is, I'm, I'm so glad that you said you can't look at a person, don't never look at a person and, and consider how they look. You look at their characters and their values and their mor morals, and that's how you consider how they look. Although, sidebar, ladies, we do look better than Brent and Corey. I mean, other than that. Yeah, we do. You we we, we do look better than we're cuter than they are. Other than that, you don't look at you don't look at that. Yeah, that's that's not I'm hard to that. do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's 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 such a low bar to look better than me, <laughs> but 
All due respect to Corey, you're a good looking man. I'm one just saying. <laughs> <laughs> but me, yeah, I, I, I got. You know what? God needs to go back in the clay and mold no. me a little bit more. <laughs> no, that's not true. That's not true. That is not true. Hey, listen, black women are we're picky women when it comes to certain things, and you you nab your good one, so that says a lot. So hey. Yeah, but you know. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know what? Let, let's love who we love and respect. You yeah. know what? I will never go on a black man's channel that's with a white woman and say anything negative because I have a respect for that man because I think us as men should respect each other. You know? And, and come on, trolls. I know you want to attack me because I say positive things about a black woman, but think about it. The black woman I'm with, I've been married to over 27 years. So, of course, I might pet, put her on a pedestal. Of course, I might, you know, say wonderful things. Of course, I might lift her up. And you know what? Of course, I might lift up black women because they share the same qualities that my wife does. It's all love, guys. That's all it is. That, that's all remember, it is. You said man, man and trolls. So, I just want to. I mean, but we'll stop there. <laughs> yeah, man and trolls. You're right. But anyway, guys, hey, since I got that out, sorry. Um, no, that was I'm glad that was a good, I'm glad you started there. It's always yeah, best to start and finish strong. That's good. That that's just in my heart, guys, because I, I think in a perfect world, we're all people. And and seriously, I love my country. I think my country is the best in the world. Yeah, we got so much sin and so much corruption. I get it. But can we come together? Can we come together? Black, white, Asian? Can we just be brothers and just do it? You know, I think we could. You know, but hey, um, that's just where my heart is. Because I served over 20 years in the Army. And I've been around men that were from different parts of the country, black, white, Asian, Hispanic. But you know what? We loved each other. We would take a bullet for each other because we had that brotherhood. You know, and and, and, and the military is so wonderful because we're forced to develop a bond for survival. But we end up loving each other in the end. And I just wish society would, you know, attach to that. I wish society would do that. Because I, I'm telling you guys, you know, I, I just wish we would cling more to God. And I, I wish men would just love women, uplift women, you know, express how much they love women, how much they. And, you know, I do that and I speak about black women, but my wife's black. So, I mean, I can't say that about white women. I'm not married to one. But I do love white women. They're my community. I would defend them. And, and I've seen people say that, you know, and this is disturbing. I, I watched a YouTube channel and this guy was saying, okay, black women, you know, um, you, you want to go out there and be with this man? Don't come back. We're not going to protect you. You know what? Mm -hmm. Becky could leave and get with the black man and love him. She could even just talk crap about us. But you know what? Me as a man, I will still protect her. I will still love her because she's a young lady. She's going where her heart is. Just because it's not me, why should I hate that? And I've seen that happen. I, and even when it was she wronged me, I, I watched how she was protected. You know, God was racist, of course, but th that's just beside the point. I'm just saying he still saw the need to protect his woman. You know, that was that, you know, that was his woman, not his woman, yeah. but, you know, she was from his community. But yeah. and, and she was with the she had a biracial child and was with a black man. He was wasn't with her, but she let it be known. But at the end of the day. He, that she was from, from his community and that is the truth, what you're saying. It's it true. If you're you're spitting facts, you actually you're right. Yeah, you're right. I, I want to read a super chat. Hey, uh, God's child, yes, Brown. Thank you for the $20 super chat. I, I do appreciate it. Thank you so much. I do. 
It says, Brent, what, what you are doing is such a blessing to black women. Oh, thank you so much. God is truly using your ministry to bring genuine healing and courage to our hearts. Not to mention the hope of actually having a loving, healthy marriage. Oh, that's sweet. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate that. I, I, I truly pray. I hope and pray that's what I'm doing. I do. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I'm a, I'm a weak human being. I, I, I don't have the, you, you know, the ability to do that unless God's behind it. I, I mean, truthfully. But I, I appreciate that. I thank you so much. And uh, I, I, I hope I put something positive out there. Mm -hmm. and, and here's the thing. You know, when I talk, I I think the family is the most important thing in our community. And I'm speaking all communities because that's the backbone of the community. That's the backbone of our town, of our, our state, of our country. I'm serious. When we get strong families, you know what? We, we There's nothing we can't do. There's nothing. Nothing. You know? Um, but I do appreciate that. And I hope I'm reaching some people. And, and like I said, guys, my intention ain't to lead black women away from black men or, you know, to uplift white men like they're something special because we're not. We're just men. My, my, my thing is, is I want to have people open up their options and actually get to know people, black, white brown, Asian, Hispanic, whatever. You know what? Find that man that fits you, ladies. And men, the same thing. That woman that fits you. You know, and if you have a preference to a certain group of ladies or men, that's fine. Just do this. Do me this favor. Just don't attack other groups of men or women. Give them respect because you're allowed to love and want to be with who you want to be with, you know? But now Brent, one thing you said is nothing that we can do. And you're right, because even in the book of Genesis, yeah. that is the reason why that, um, um, when the they were building the tower to the heavens and the languages were broken up so that that cannot happen because they were going, it was going against God's will. It was because it, they, were, they were making it happen. It was possible because it mentioned in the book of Genesis that it is nothing that man cannot do. And it is true. It, yes. is, it is nothing that man cannot do. Now, can things be done perfectly? Well, no, but the thing is, it can be dangerously close to, to I mean, to be imperfect people. It can be done very well. So if it is something that a, per, that a person wants to do, like, you know, that it's cliche, but it bears repeating. You can put your mind, if you want to do something, put your mind to it and you can make it, it can happen. I mean, look at what, what innovation, look what, you know, with technology and all that, look what, how far man has come. And so, you know, you could, they could perform brain surgery, any heart surgery, you name it. Now just, they don't even have to slaughter you anymore. So the thing is, that's the reason why the, the languages were confused because they were making it happen. Like yeah. I said, it's even mentioned in the Bible. So you're absolutely right. But then you wonder, if man wants peace, why is it so impossible? Well, the Bible speaks on that, but we'll talk about that another day. But you are right about that. It is possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and yeah, I, I mean, but Corey said I'm a handsome man. So, hey, Corey, <laughs> he said I'm a handsome man. I, I agree with you, sir. Or at least I'm one. <laughs> You are a handsome man, Brent. You you know you are. You're just being coy. <laughs> okay. Thanks for fluffing me up, but no, you uh, are. You are. I'm going to fantasize that someone really thinks that. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you, I, I tell you this much. I, I'm I'm almost positive. It's it's a bunch of women standing in line waiting for Sandy to mess up, which we know that's not going to happen. But you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised. Uh, okay. Although, no, I don't want anybody thinking I'm going to do that because I, I, I you know, 
I, I, listen, that this is my twin brother. However, it's a lot yeah. of women. You'd be surprised a lot of women are standing back going, Sandy, you got one time. You got one time. <laughs> No, Sa Sandy's got my heart. Sandy's got That's right. Everything. That's right. You and I have talked, and this man means this, okay? You don't you all don't know the conversations we've had and how he is dead serious about it. You can hang it up. Whoever you women are, you can hang it up. <laughs> thanks, thanks for fluffing me up, but <laughs> oh, <laughs> I know the truth. <laughs> but yeah, anyway. Um, but anyway, I, I just wanted to kind of uh you know, get that out there, vent a little bit. We respect marriage over here. Yes, awesome. That's right. And you marriage should. Real. Yes, R. Howard. Yes. Uh, marriage is the most important thing, really. Uh, you know, giving your heart to Jesus is more important than anything. But marriage is very important. It, it it's God's plan for us as men and women. We need to come together. And, and mar get married, have a family together. That's what it's all about. That's a true blessing. Um, oh, and you know what? Please let me clear this up. I don't mean the women over yes. here that's following you. I meant just like the lurkers. That's what I meant. Lurkers, oh, not lurkers. not your point, not your people. I meant lurkers, women, not you all. No, I'm sorry. The, the ladies that follow me are classy ladies. They're they're women of God. They they do the right thing. That's right. That's right, They're Akita. Off of the top. We're gonna fight. We're we're on Sandy's side. That's right, Akita. We on. You know, look, when, we, when I say who the who, just 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 be, be ready. Okay, I'm gonna pull up. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and in fact, you know, if you look at me, Sandy's name's written all over me. But... That's right. That's right. <laughs> and gladly so. That's right. Um, yeah. <laughs> Calling a man handsome isn't dis disrespected if he's married. It just, yeah, it is. It, it's uh, courteous. Yeah. yeah. You know, and that, that goes along with women too. I can tell yeah. a woman she's beautiful. Yeah. And she could be a married woman. I can tell yeah. Sunkist, looking at her, Sunkist, you're a beautiful woman. You're so that don't sweet. Mean that. And I'm speaking truth. But you're kind, you're so sweet. Yeah. No, but you know what? And, and the thing is, it's a difference in looking and observing and saying, oh, that's that's a handsome yeah. guy. I think, yeah, I think Brent is a handsome guy. And there's a difference in looking and having passion for someone in your heart to want them. You yeah. know, that that yeah. that's a difference. There, there's a difference. So that, that's when it comes true. To America, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, you're you're so right. And uh you know, and we could like I said, I see beautiful women every day. But you know what? I'm not desiring them. I'm not lusting after them. I can just see they're beautiful. You know mm -hmm. why? Because my eyes are on my wife. You know why? Because mm -hmm. my desires are on my wife. You know what? Mm -hmm. The woman I admire is my wife. You know what? Mm -hmm. The one woman that's my best friend is my wife. Mm -hmm. You know, the one woman I want to get intimate with is my wife. Mm -hmm. No one else. That's right. That's a marriage, guys. Yes, and, and most most people watching tonight understand that, and, and they, they do, um, you know. But anyway, and that's what makes it beautiful because you give your when you get married, you give everything to the person you're married to. When I married my wife, I give her all of me, you know, and, and whatever little bit I have belongs to my wife, you know. You know what what my desire is in my heart, the love I have for her, um, you know, how much I admire her, how much I want to spend time with that goes to my wife. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and when I go to work and I work to pay the bills and I work to, you know, pay the car note, and I work to pay the mortgage, and I, I work to give my wife a little money so she can have something for herself. You know what that is? That's true love. That's marriage. Mm -hmm. She she gets everything of me, and mm -hmm. she deserves nothing less. Mm -hmm. You know, but in turn, she gives me all of her. She has my back. She loves me. You know, she comfort, comforts me when I'm down. And no matter how much of a macho guy you are, no much, 
no matter how much of a manly man you are, you need comfort here and there. Mm -hmm. And you have a good wife that that charges you like you wouldn't believe. Mm -hmm. And that makes you stronger. You know? Mm -hmm. and but I, anyway. That's, that's, that's so, that's, that was so balanced. I, that, yes. That's great. Yes. You, I'm trying not to cry here. I have a lump in my throat. <laughs> Okay, let, let's get. We're going to get into the videos. What we? I, I'm sorry. I kind of. I'm a traditional guy. I I think marriage is the most important thing in our lives. I think men and women coming together is a beautiful thing. I think it's a blessing from God, and I think we should cling to that and live our lives towards that goal. Us as men and women, we should. That's what God wants us to do. I mean, seriously, but uh, I, I'm going to go ahead and start the video. And guys, like I said, these two men, I'm not going to go in and attack them. You know, I might have my opinion. It might be a strong opinion, but these are two men nonetheless. Okay. These are men that have platforms. These are men that are in the spotlight, right? Um. You know, but I'm going to show the video. I'm going to give my opinion. Sunkiss will give you hers. And, you know, it's it's opinion. But look what they say and take it in. And you decide what is right, right and what is wrong. Okay? There's no right and wrong answer here. You just watch and tell me what you think. Okay? And I hope we can learn something from these two videos. Um, you know, but anyway, I'm going to put this up here. Okay. And this is the right here is the copyright disclaimer. Okay. This is the copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the copyright act of 1976, three years after Sunkiss was born. <laughs> yeah. That makes me 18 years old. All right. All right. There you go. She's 18. She <laughs> looks like she's 18. You know, you're so funny. You need young no. guys. Yeah. You're you, so sweet. Yeah, you just as long as you, just long as you don't go past 23. That's right. 23 and oh, under. Yeah. No, 23. Yeah. You look much younger than 23. Okay. <laughs> um, but this is the copyright disclaimer. And this disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Statute of 1976, uh, allowance is made for the purpose of criticism. Yeah, we're going to criticize. Get ready. Um, <laughs> <laughs> comment. Oh, yeah, we're going to have comments. Uh, yeah. News reporting. Yeah, we got the news. We're going to report it. Teaching. Oh, yeah, we're going to teach. <laughs> scholarship. I don't know if you're going to get a scholarship out of this one. <laughs> but research. Yeah, yeah we researched it. Um, fair <laughs> use permitted under the copyright statute that might authorize be infringing and nonprofit educational or purpose use tips the balance of favor <laughs> of fair use. Okay, we're going to do this under the Fair Use Act for education for commentary, for our perspective, and uh, criticism. And we're going to try to learn something from the, what these men are saying, right? And I hope you guys enjoy. Um, I'm excited. I'm going, I'm, I'm, going, I'm going to post a video on uh, Ralph Richard Banks, the Harvard Law professor that's been there since 1998. And he wrote the book, Is Marriage for White People. Check out his book, guys. Read his book. You might find some interesting stuff. Um, but anyway, let me go ahead and uh, remove this. Okay. And then after Ralph Richard Banks, after I show him, I'm going to show uh, Doctor of Delusional, <laughs> Dr. Omar Johnson. Okay. Um, but anyway, let, let me put this up here and let me make sure me and uh, the beautiful Sunkist is on here. 
Um, so sweet. Thank you. Gosh, we're okay. <laughs> this guy, I, I can't. I, hold on. Okay, I'm trying not to laugh. This guy, you have me, but I, I, I have the giggles because of you, because of that. That's you like men, copyright. you throw in that. incarceration rates, oh, you throw sorry. in uh, the unemployment rates. Okay, sorry, sorry, son kissed. I... No, no, you're fine. It's just you got me laughing. I'm just laughing at you. <laughs> okay, okay. This is a an article from CNN. Shout out to CNN. Um, buddy, this guy's talking to uh, Ralph Richard Banks, and I've shown him this video before, and he's the author of is marriage for white people. He wrote a book and he recently had a New York times article that's telling black women, uh, think about your options when it comes to marrying white men, because, uh, could Katanji Brown Jackson is married to a white man and Kamala Harris is. And, uh, you know, he, he puts it out there that created a firestorm of controversy. But anyway, um, we're going to watch his video, and you get an idea who this man is and his beliefs, right? And he's a black man. He's married to a black woman, okay? He's not. So just keep that in, and uh, let's just hear what he has to say. We have more black women, right, graduating from college, two to one to black men. You throw in incarceration rates. You throw in uh, the unemployment rates. And you're saying there's just not enough black men. Well, there, 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 are, there are not enough black men for all of the college-educated black women in particular that have the type of husbands that they want to have. The type that they want to have. Now, I, I put this out, and we had this conversation uh, yesterday, and a lot of people were mm -hmm. chiming in. And I decided to ask for questions from viewers. And one of the questions, simply put, is, do black women deserve better than what black men have to offer? That seems like a, a very heavy uh, uh, question there, but is that essentially what it is? Do we not measure up to the quality of black women right now? That's really a great way to put it. And, and I will admit that I usually think about it from the other perspective, yeah. which is that should, is it fair to ask black women to sacrifice their own happiness on the altar, as it were, of black men's struggles? And what okay, I think not. What, what is okay? Let me stop it right there, um, ladies and gentlemen. Um, what he just said is it? Uh, do black women need the sacrifice for the struggle of black men? Okay, and I'm not saying. I'm just saying, should women have to lower their standards because they're in a higher education level? than their male counterparts. <clears throat> I think that's what he's, he, he's uh, no. trying to say. Nope, nope, and another nope. No. Yeah, because so. Because it used to be at one point, Brent, and, and I'm sure you've heard this before, when black women were still, you know, fawning over black men relentlessly not too long ago, Saying even with when Tyler Perry put the movie out with Gabrielle Union with um and uh what is his name um him anyways and she was saying with the three little girls daddy's girls when when oh, Tyler yeah. Perry yeah, girls, and yeah. she was yeah and he came in and she was saying asking him questions and all this other stuff well see the thing is that was one of the the complaints when they were she was meet with her girls and all that. They were the, the black men were always saying, well, and this was always this was that wasn't old. This is something he always said. Well, the jobs that we have and the status that we have and, the, you know, the caliber of, you know, of our positions and all that. It's just put, it doesn't it's not that many black women around. It's just that it's always the white women. So that just leaves us no choice. So the black women accepted that they had to go with that and now and i heard other black women saying well that's just that that was that was their argument we have to accept that black woman and honestly this is what i heard and black women were okay with that now this question is posed to us <clears throat> so the mic on let me see yeah, <laughs> ditto all right yep okay all right so <laughs> But anyway, thank thank you for that sun kiss. Um, no problem. Any day, anytime. Okay, 
<laughs> Let's continue on. Okay. Is that, uh, I think not. Okay, what's that sacrifice I, I have, necessarily when we're talking about, and I asked you this question yesterday, is it always marrying down if the person you're marrying doesn't make as much money or have the same level of education? Could be a good guy. Yeah, he could be a good guy, and, and lots of relationships work across classes, that's true. Uh, but it's also the case that for everyone, not simply for the women, but for the men as well, Having a, a spouse who is matched to you educationally in terms of your outlook, your aspirations, your experiences, that's a positive thing. So it's actually not a great thing for the wife or the husband if they're in a mismatched relationship. All right, and we know a lot of conversations were started yesterday. Okay, let me stop there. Okay, he makes a point, right, with the mixed match um, group, right? I and, and I believe what he's saying is when it comes to men and women, we shouldn't be mixed match when it comes to education level, when it comes to the economic level. I, I don't believe that works. And sometimes, you know, this is always an exception to the rule. There might be a woman that's, you know, a lawyer that makes, that marries a construction worker. Okay, it can happen. And they can truly love each other. And it's not saying they're bad people. They could be both good men and women, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But usually, and I'm going to be honest, that usually don't work, okay? That's an exception to the rule. The rule is, is usually women want to be with a man that's at her level or above, okay? She feels more comfortable. Now, with men, we feel more comfortable, and I'm being honest. With a woman that's our, our level, but a little below or way below. Because we're the providers, right? It makes us feel like men because we're working hard. We're paying the bills. We're taking care of the, the wife we have and the kids. It makes us feel like a man. It does. Honestly. <clears throat> and, and it's a natural thing. <clears throat> I, I, can, I can be where I'm at. And guys, honestly, us as men, we could be upper middle class or middle class, and we could marry a woman that lives in lower middle class or, you know, more humble economic positions, and we can marry her and it'll work because we're able to provide. Mm -hmm. But for women, it's not that way. Women, they, they don't really... Uh, they don't really uh, progress when they're with a man that's lower economic status than they are. Us as men, we thrive because we're doing it all. We're doing what a man should do. We're we're working hard. We're you know we're taking care of our wife. We take her out to dinner once in a while, and and she loves us and she sees the hard work. And when we come home and our back is sore and our feet hurt. But if she's above us economically, we feel less than. And I'm going to tell you, this is the truth. You know, I've always made more than my wife economically, except one time. When I transitioned, when I retired out of the Army, into the civilian world, at that moment, she made more money than me. You know how much, how low I felt? You know how much less of a man I felt? I didn't feel right. And that didn't mean I was less of a man. I was in tr transition. It wasn't my fault. But what I'm saying is, naturally, us as men want to be the providers. We do. And it makes me, us feel like a man. And mm -hmm. women gravitate to that. They cling to us because they see us working hard. They see us, you know, breaking our back for our wife and our kids. And it comes together. And it fulfills us both. You know? Yeah. It, it does. Can, can, yeah, that's not, that's it. That's it? That, that's, yeah. that's it. Big, yeah, can I add to that? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Make sure my mic is on. To add, it's not much I can add to that because that was enough said. <laughs> um, read the room. Um, this that, yeah, that part because I am not 
I, not. I am not. I refuse to feel like I have to go pull a whole eight to 10 hour shift. Ha! To go do that. And then if he decides, let's, you know, you, we're going to have a family. This is any. Oh, no, 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 if I have to go pull an eight, hour, eight to 10 hour shift, see, the thing is, I think a lot of men, well, what are, we, what are we talking about? We talk about men, males, pimps, or sims. I don't know. We'll talk about that later. But like I said, I, I didn't open it up to male pimps and sims. Okay. Let's just go. Let's just do a blanket statement. Women okay. don't feel like she should, no, real, no woman should feel like. She should have to be able to have to go out and be a man at an eight to 10 hour job or a career, whatever she's doing, then come home. Bad enough, she has to be assertive there, come home, and she has to be assertive even at home because she's not going to feel like she can leave that at work because she has to come home and continue to feel like that. Because he's he's still not pulling his he's not doing his part, but he wants her to automatically just leave that at home. That's not easy to do, because yeah. I don't care what anybody says. And the thing is, it it can have it can work if they choose. I mean, it's not a that's not a a a, a blanket you know situation. It's hard. It's it's hard to do, but it could happen. But I don't care if that woman is good at acting and pretending like she's okay with it. She's not okay with it, and she's yeah. gonna. She's not gonna have the respect for him. Not the thing is, if it's a if it's a, a temporary situation or it's just something that happened in life, and it's just oh my goodness, we didn't expect this. That's a different situation. But if she, they start off this way, and that's just a way of life in their home, she's gonna secretly not respect him, not and not really like him if he's okay with that. That yeah. that's just not gonna work because she can't turn it off. She, a every woman wants to be able to come home and be able to turn it off, whatever it is, turn it off because she knows that he's he's going to catch whatever needs to be caught, so that she can fall into her her femininity. And the thing is, a woman has to, if she wants to have a baby, if she's pulling the bulk of the weight financially, she's going to have to go to she's going to have to go to work, pregnant and all. Um, she's going to have to figure out how if things are going to be paid while she's you know. At the hospital, when she comes, who who was going to pay for the hospital, the medical bills, and and while she's on sick leave, even though she's steadily having to be served, she's still in that masculine energy. That is too much. Then she's going to be the she. The one, women are automatically going to do majority of the work for is care for the children. So all of that, she's still going. She's still no. And the fact is, she can't turn it off because they they started off with her being the breadwinner. So that's going to be a problem with me. So that's going to be a negative. I don't know if that's what you were looking for, but I just had to put that in. There. So no, yeah. that's no. Mm -mm. That that is well said. Yes. <laughs> um, let's let's continue with the interview here. Because of this topic, and I had one of these conversations at my house with Mrs. Holmes, and one of these uh, things that keeps coming up is how do you, and the word I think my wife used, was reprogram, if you will, black women, because you're suggesting they need to be open to dating outside of their race. But, you know, a lot of black women just like brothers. They like a black man. Right. So right. if you're just not right. attracted naturally, why, why have them give up on finding a black man? Right, that's, that's a great question. Uh, and the issue, the way I think of that is that Women have been asked to carry a great load. Uh, black women shoulder a lot of the burden, in short, of black men's struggles. And I am asking women to put the burden down. Uh, many women think that they're attracted to black men. They are attracted to black men. But attraction itself is complicated. And one of the things that I discovered in the course of writing this book is that there's a whole host of fears and desires and anxieties that animate black women's attraction to black men. Okay, and on that, though, I got another question from a viewer. Judy uh, sent in and said, well, it sounds like you're saying, why should black women give up the good fight? You know, you're not trying to, you're not telling them to take on an, a project of fixing a man necessarily, but why right. just give up right. on black men? Right, you, you, that is another great question. I, I actually am asking black women to 
give up the good fight because give the up fight the good hasn't fight has been successful. The, the, the fight has not been successful. This is what a, a friend of mine, Carolyn Edgar, calls a Negro improvement project, <laughs> uh, which is what a lot of black women undertake. And often the results are not so great. So the, the strategy has been counterproductive. Uh, it doesn't help African-Americans for us to have black men and black women locked in bad relationships yeah. and raising children in households where the parents quarrel and ultimately divorce. Well, That's look, not a win for anyone. It is law professor Ralph Richard Banks. The okay, let me stop it right there. I want to get people's opinion, everybody's opinion on this one. Okay. Um, all right. What he said is Richard Ralph Banks, he says black women give up the struggle, give up the good fight. And this is coming from a black man. So I, I think what he's saying is, it, I'm going to interpret it in what I see. Maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong. But I think what Richard Ralph Banks is telling black women, black women, give up the struggle, give up the good fight. And you know what? Go what's best for you, black women. Um. You know, and if it's not the black man, maybe it's the white guy. Maybe it's the Asian guy. Maybe it's that Hispanic guy. Maybe it's that Italian guy. Maybe it's that guy, whatever. And I think what he's saying is black women, there's too much on your shoulders. I think what he's saying is black women, you need to be the prize. Let the man do the work. And if the man in your community is not doing the work, Go to another community where the man will do the work. You, you, okay. That's just my opinion. That's it. That you're right. But you know what? You know what? Where I'm, uh -huh. you know what? You, uh, that, yeah. Everything, everything was ditto. Everything, I, I agree. Every, I feel the same way. But you know what? It comes a time when black women need to stop adding black men into certain sectors of their conversation, lives, minds, feelings inners and outers of everything and just say, you know what? How about I just stop giving up on myself? That's right. That's the PTSD, give, okay, hold on. That's you the know, thing. You know what, stop, I was that's the question. It, should I stop? Is it time for me to stop giving up on me? That's the question at this point. I, I, I agree with you. You know what I would say to black women? Put yourself first. Black women, you're number one. Black women, you are. Make yourself. And that's why we, when we say that and we take him out of it, and, and here's the thing: it could be every race of man. Take every, just take a man out of it, and just look at us. In fact, I can't even see. Hold on, I'm trying. Let me see how you look, Brent. There you go. So the thing is, take take men out of the just out of the equation, except for you right now, Brent. I have to see you because I'm talking to you. Your show. Okay. So take every man out of the equation and just look at in the mirror and just and I promise you the reason why I know this is because I have to do this with myself. I talked and my therapist suggested it too. But I did before I talked to her. I talked to her today at five oh nine. But the thing is she was so proud of me because this is what I have to do this. And I only say this because I'm a speck of dust. And if I don't implement these things in my life, I will forget. And I will go back to doing what I did when I was, you know, with my toxic relatives. So my thing is this. Take the, all of that out and add, just look at yourself in the mirror and say, what is, ask that question. Not what, okay, what this, this doctor said, he is spot on. But then if so many women, you know, sometimes it's just the way you have to work things. Because sometimes black women get so, and I've been in other chats where I'm like, when, when, when other divestors have said about I heard one divestor say sometimes you have to choose Bubba and one said the girls I don't want no Bubba that's not what she was saying she's just saying sometimes you have to just say you know what you you might have to stop looking at Tyrone so much and leave his muscles and his this and all that alone and you may have to choose something that's totally different from what you expect she wasn't talking about a literal Bubba if you want a Bubba fine not just look at another race of man oh my goodness and is that that's the thing. So sometimes you have to, it's just words. Sometimes people get caught up in and sometimes people don't pay attention to words like they should. So just look, look in the mirror and just say, 
I need to choose you. And I let, and should I just stop and say, when am I going to stop and say, ask the question, when am I going to stop giving up on me and leave all of the race of men out? And okay, what does that look like? What does that answer look like from that question? And then add in what this doctor says and say, okay, if he's, we're on the topic of men and you think about the black community with the black man being in, in the household and how it looks. And if it doesn't look this way, why? And if him being gone and how it looks, and if it, if it looks this way, why? Okay. If it's all looking the same and if it's all murky and dirty and all that, then that's why he said, maybe we should marry out. That's it. Yeah. You know. And, and you know what? I think he's looking at it logically. He's not looking at it like being race loyal and all this stuff. He's just looking at it like, do you want love? Do you want marriage? He or she might look different than you. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's all he's saying. That's all he's saying. Choose you. Choose you at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. However, whatever. Just choose you at the end of the day. And, and here's my opinion. I think Ralph Richard Banks really loves black women. As yeah. a black man, he does. Because mm -hmm. he's telling women, look, go where you're loved. Go where you're celebrated. Mm -hmm. It might be a white guy. It might be a Hispanic guy. It might be an Asian guy. But if mm -hmm. you love him and he loves you, it, it, it's a beautiful thing. Love is love, right? Um, I think that's what he's saying. That I, is I what mean, he's saying. Yeah, that, that's what he's saying. But then you have so many girls. I've talked to ladies and I say, well, at, you ask, answer me this. Why do you feel the need to stay there while he's doing X, Y, Z to you? They said, because I love him. Instead of saying, I'm going to be with this man because of the way that he loves me. And they don't get that. And oh, that's what he's trying to help them wow. to see. That's a good point. And you know what? Mm -hmm. And I will mm -hmm. say this, black women... You have the biggest hearts. Black women, you're the most loyal. Black women, you will stand with your man even longer than you should. And, and I've seen it. And, and you know what, black women? It, that's what makes you special. That was, that's what makes you beautiful. But that's what makes you vulnerable, too. That's what puts you out there. So keep that in mind. Embrace yourself more than you, you have been in the past. Mm -hmm. That's what I would say. Mm -hmm. Seriously. Because you deserve better than what you've got. I'm glad for black men saying this. I really am. Yeah. I, 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 I just. Really I'm, I'm so happy to see that this is a black man because they can't refute anything. They can't attack his message. Well, they you will. Know. They will. I mean, they, they will. will. They will. Yeah, you're right. They will. But. You know, he's speaking truths and facts. Mm -hmm. But anyway, let's continue. The book okay. is called Is Marriage for White People? I think it went on sale on the second this week, and it has started a conversation that I'm sure will continue. Okay, that, that's the end of that. Let me... Uh, okay, so that was his book. It was like 11 or 12 years ago. He was saying is marriage for white people. And what he was saying is, in the black community, marriage, if you look at the stats, you can research stats from the Pew Research and um, news organizations from the 90s to now. Um, in the black community, marriage is like 25 to 30 percent. Black men and black women. Okay. that That is the truth. That is facts. And you know that but you know there are different factors of course there's two million more black women than black men um and this is pew research research so you can look it up so if we start out with two million more black women than black men guess what and then here's another step black men date and marry out twice as much as black women right so guess what? It's really slanted, right? So if you're race loyal as a black woman, and nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying don't do that. But here's the thing. You have less to choose from. Guess what? 
your value goes down because there's more of you than the man. So they can pick what they want. But if you open up your options, guess what? Now you have multiple groups of men competing for you. And that's, I, I believe, is the natural order of things where men should compete for women, not women for men. You know? Um, but anyway, um, thank you. Uh, your name here for the nine ninety nine super sticker. Thank you so much, young lady. I appreciate that. God bless you. That's that's awesome. I I do appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um, honestly, I I do appreciate that. Um, but you you know um, and, and I think uh, Richard Roth Banks. What he's saying is he's not. I don't think he's saying that. Stay away from the black man. I don't think that's his message at all. I think his message is, ladies, look what's out there. Look at the options you have. Because you want a man that's at your same level educationally, uh, business, economics, right? And it's better for us as men. Because if we're with a woman that's way above us economically, we don't feel like a man. We don't. Even even the guys that embrace that, that feel like, oh, yeah, I got her. Yeah, I, I got it made. No, they they still don't feel like a man because deep down inside, they know what they, they're supposed to do because it's a natural thing. Um, you know, but uh, and I think that's what Richard Ralph Banks is saying. Ladies, open up your options because you're you're. You're worth more than you give your credit for. And, uh, yeah. You know, and I think that's where the future is going. More black women are going to open up their options and they're going to be with men that are on their same economic level. And it might be, it might not be a black man. It might be a white guy. It might be an Asian guy. You know, and that's okay. It's okay. But, you know, it, it just goes together better if they're at your economic level or the man's a little bit above you. It, it works both. It works great for men and women. And like I said, true love, it might not come in the same package that you came in. And that's okay. But ladies, go where you're celebrated. Go where you're loved. And, and like I said, if you're race loyal and that's the only man you want, stay with that because that's where your heart is. Don't deviate from that. But vet that man and go for the best options. Now, ladies, if you're okay with any group of men, go where you're most celebrated. Because bottom line, it's your choice. Bottom line, it's your life. Bottom line, you know. You're the prize, ladies. It's not the man that's the prize. It's the women. The Bible tells us that women, a good woman's worth her weight in gold. You know, a good wife, you you know, you have a good thing. You find favor from the Lord. The Bible says that the woman's the prize. It don't say the man. It don't. So all these dating gurus that tell you that the man's the prize, they're full of crap. And I'm telling you, the man that's the prize is going to hit the wall by himself because he's not the prize. The man is the, the 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 tough one that's in the trenches, that gets his hands dirty, that breaks his back, that earns that living. The woman is the beautiful one. She's the treasure. You know, she she's the princess. She's the queen in the family. She's the one that the man protects. She's the one that the man loves. She's the one that the man, you know, gives his heart and soul for. In a perfect world, that's what we'd be doing. But anyway, okay, let me, <laughs> I don't want to go too far into this because I could go all night. Um, but anyway, you know, Ralph Richard Banks, he tells you, ladies, consider your options. Is marriage for white people? In my opinion, no, it's not. Marriage is for all people. You know, we need to come together as men and women and marry each other. Whether it's the same race or 
different races. It don't matter. As long as us as men be men, love the women we are, we're with, marry them, and take care of them, provide for them. And you know what? The women, usually women, if you're doing what you're supposed to as a man, she'll submit to you and she'll love you with all her heart. And she'll submit to you and not even know she's doing it. You know? And the thing, he, what I appreciate about him is he's not dogging black men and he's not even really he's not. He's not. It. He didn't really even mention black men, really. He's really talking directly to black women and he's not even telling black women to leave. He's just saying, notice, not even to, because I noticed that he's not saying open up your options because he noticed, he knows that black women sees all other options. He's just saying, consider all of your uh, the options. Consider all of the options. Now, he didn't say leave because he know black women, majority of the black women are going to leave. He knows that. He's just saying yeah. the ones that are open-minded, consider all of your other options because we know yeah. that a lot of black women are going to stay. He knows that because he, he yeah. knows, I mean, he knows, but he's just saying the ones that are willing to, to have self-love or to reconsider and say, you know what, no more. Or, okay, I have re reevaluated myself and I am enforcing my worth. What, 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 you know, what, what, okay, what, what else do I have to work with? What else, what can I consider? And that's, those are the ones that he's looking, he's talking to, you know, and, yeah. and that was, that's the premise of his, his message. Yeah. I, I, I agree with that. I do. And here's mm -hmm. the thing those women that are, are wanting to date out or, are going to open up their options. Guess what that does, ladies and gentlemen? Mm -hmm. That gives the women that are race loyal, that want that black man, to have a better choice of the black man that gets the better choice. Because she's not competing with all black women. You know, it, it, I, I think, and P Pill it, iterated on this, where she said, when you date out, you give better options to all women, those that are race loyal, those that want to date out across the board. And it helps everybody. It really does. And, and, and the thing of it is, you know, and that's what it's all about. And, and I think women should have a choice. I, I believe women should have, you know, you know, the guy that's, you know, regardless of what he does, she should have a choice. And us as men should compete for that choice. And there was a time and place where we did that. You know, where we practiced chivalry, where we, you know, showed women love and respect. Where us as men, where it was manly to say as a man, look, ladies, I love you. Look, ladies, you're beautiful. Look, ladies. I think you're everything, and you, you're a treasure. You're a princess. You're everything. Back in the day, that was a manly thing. Today, no. That means you're weak. That means you're not even a man. But if you check a woman and and tell her tell her off or tell her she ain't worth the crap, then you're a man. Mm -hmm. Tell me I'm wrong. You know, if you could put a woman in her place, men will glorify you. But if you, you express your love and you get a little emotional, you're weak. Tell me I'm wrong. I, I mean, it, it, it's true. But it's a manly thing to love the women you're with. It's a manly thing to have a little emotion. You know, express how much you love her. Tell her she's beautiful. Tell her what she means to you. That, that's a beautiful thing. That, that's a manly thing. It really is. And marrying a woman, take her, taking her on as your wife is a manly thing. And yes, even if she has a child from a previ previous relationship, it's still a manly thing. It's a good thing. Be that man. Be a godly man. You know, because when you marry that woman, if she has children, guess what? It's a package deal, guys. And it's not, and that don't make you weak. That means you love her enough to accept her and her children in. That makes you a man. It, it really does. You know, I, I'm yeah. saying. It's easier for a man 
to to attack I mean a male to attack mm -hmm. a woman. When you go when you catch someone that's bigger, taller, more aggressive, stronger physically, to that has more of a more dominant um position to monopolize on something that appears to be weaker. And they say, oh, it's because I'm a man to beat their chest. No, you're not. That doesn't take strength. No. And then the comment that was just up here, you know, in order to seem to, to be more or, or or to seem to come across as being, um, uh, I guess, looking, appearing to be a man with the polygamy and things of that nature is to be able to, you know, smile and fist bump or wink at the other guy to say, yeah, look at me. I'm a, I'm a man that no, you're, that's not, that takes weakness. So, yes. I, you know, that it takes a bully to go after someone that appears to be, you know, weaker or less than, or for a male to take your strength to go after the weaker, the seemingly weaker link. That's not a man, but I would like to see you take that same energy and go to someone with that that same with that same um, strength or that you know the same sex. And nine out of ten, that won't happen. And yeah. so you know you had some of these rappers saying they're gonna meet up and box each other or fight each other, and that hasn't happened yet. But they can do take the same energy and go after another woman. That's easy yeah. to do. You know, so that the thing is that it's, it's you know, that can happen in any part aspect of life, and so that even down to what we view next, you know, it's so easy to do, and it's so easy to attack the messenger because that messenger seems to be weaker. So you could be the man and being at home and on your keyboard, talk, you know, typing all this mess, talking about black women and dog and all that. But these same males would not say that to a real man in his face in person or a lot of black women. They wouldn't do that or they wouldn't even step to the black women that they want to stay committed to the black man because they know they'll be they'll be denied. And so that, again, that's laughable. That That's laughable. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Give us a thumbs up, guys. If you came on. You know, there's, what, 74 in the building? Give us a thumbs up if you like it. And if you don't like it, give us a thumbs down. I'm, I'm just saying. Trolls, I know you like to give the thumbs down. Hey, I appreciate it. Because you know what? You're putting pocket change in my pocket. <laughs> You're giving me some change I can spend mm -hmm. on my black wife. And you know what? That's a blessing. <laughs> mm -hmm. But anyway, um... All joking aside, yeah, give me a thumbs up. I, I really appreciate that. If you like it, thumbs it up. Nothing wrong with that. Um, we we covered Richard Ralph Banks, right? He's a Harvard Law professor. He's been there since 1998. You know, he, he went to Ivy League schools. He's the top of the line when it comes to education. You know, he he's the... Top of the top in his class, you might say. Some would say he's a high-value man beyond that. The man is very successful. He is very smart, very intelligent. And, uh, you know, check out his book, is Marriage for White People. It was put out 11, 12 years ago, but I'm sure you still find it. And, and read it. Whether you agree with it or not, pick the man's brain and see where he's coming from. Does it make sense or is it just something to sell books? I, I think he really loves and cares for black women. I do. I really think he does. You I know, think so. I, I do. I don't think he he's not putting himself above other men because he's a black man. He looks at men as men. He looks at women as women. And he's married to a black woman. So it, he's not a hater of black women. So, I, I mean, he... He's a man's man. And, and he's not sticking, sticking to the black man's code. You know, for him to put himself out there like that and be willing to take some licks, that says a lot he, about his, his his values and character. Yeah. It, it does. He, he's not doing the, you know, the expected thing, you might say. Yeah. 
He's not going to, down the path of every man. And I think he's a rugged thinking individual, mm -hmm. which I embrace. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I have respect for that. Mm -hmm. and like you said, he wasn't attacking black men. He didn't no. even say anything about black men. But people will twist it like he's trying to destroy black men. Um, but you but, know what? If they found ways to to attack Jesus' message, then of course they're going to attack. Uh, you know what I'm I, saying? Yeah, that's it's right. sad. But that's you know when people don't want to hear the truth, you know they rather listen to what well, is good is bad to them. If it's bad, it's good to them. So because then it yeah. will, it will call that would call it would make them have to change. And when when it, people don't want to change, then they're going to attack something a message that's just that's you know positive and good such as his so mm -hmm. yeah it is um next i'm going to show dr umar johnson <laughs> now this is thick this is thick on the wall <laughs> <laughs> he's the man you know dr umar he hey hey black ladies he loves you he he's uh <laughs> he's a black nationalist he's pan-african he believes in Black people with black people, and that's it. Uh, and that's yeah, fine. He could think he could believe in that. I'm not going to attack him for that. If that's what he believes, okay. But we're going to uh, pay, post a video, and this is his reaction from uh, Doctor or yeah, Doctor Ralph Richard uh, Banks, law Harvard professor. On his book and his article, what you know, the recent article he, he tells black women consider dating uh, and marrying white men because of Kamala Harris and uh, you know, the new Supreme Court justice. You know, both these ladies are married to white men, but anyway, a lot of people didn't like he made that reference, but anyway, here's his reaction on that. Me, More the black women should consider marrying white men. Okay, all right, doctor. Wait. Whoa, whoa. Hey. Okay, seriously, Brent. I'm not. I'm not trying to. I don't want to laugh because I don't want people to think I'm making a mockery of him right off. Okay, I'm gonna pause it. Go ahead and get it out. <laughs> Just, okay. I cannot. I can't. I can't. You did okay. not. You know what? You are wrong. It's two left shoes. You are wrong. It's two left. You play to I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> what? I did not know. We're, we're just what? listening to the good doctor. Wait, <laughs> Br Brent, you go from the doctor, the Harvard doctor, to this. What is this? Okay, no, and I'm not trying. I'm just saying. <laughs> I can't. Okay, hold on. I'm a good okay. ball. Hold on. No, wait. Well, Reason why I say this. I, hey. Okay. They just got two different educations, okay? They're both doctors, okay? <laughs> okay. Next time, please set this up better before. <laughs> okay, now you're going to have me laugh. Okay, Dr. Umar. Hey, good doctor, sir. Okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, hey, you, you're no less than uh, uh, we Dr. Gonna, Dr. We we're uh, going to talk. We're going to talk. Uh, Harvard Harvard law professor, but you got your own professor. Hey, this is a professor of woke knowledge. Okay, let's let's listen to Dr. Umar Johnson. I'm right, done. Hey, okay. hey, hey, good doctor. <laughs> okay. Okay. I want to better stop. Okay. Good doctor. Black ladies, listen to this man. He's <laughs> He's got your best interest. Unlike the other guy, he just okay. Let's let's go ahead. Okay. Okay, I lost the audio on him. Goodness gracious, I'm so okay. happy. Okay. While more black women should consider marrying white men. <laughs> while more black women should consider marrying white men. Show us the phone, doctor. Man, that's some good uh <laughs> that's some good optics. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I, I, okay, go ahead. While more black women should consider marrying white men, while more black women should consider marrying white men, why more black women should consider marrying white men. Exhibit A. It says. Exhibit. Okay. Okay, why 
Okay, he said it about five times. Why more black women should considering marrying white men, right? What's on his pendant? What's on that little pin? The little flare it, pin? It, oh, it says uh, F U or F blank C K Trump. He don't like Trump. Okay. 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 That, okay. That's fine. I'm okay. Going, I'm just wondering. I'm not oh, I can I can see it, but I was wondering what it says. Okay. What it says. He don't like Trump. It, it's F C K Trump. Okay. 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 I'm not going to say it, but that's what his pin says. Okay. okay. N nice hat there, Umar. That's okay. what I couldn't get. I was trying to. I, the background is blending up. It's just a lot. Go on, go on. Yeah, but nice plaid lumberjack shirt. I like that. Good, good look, brother. And, and the pen. That's like the '80s look. You know when they wore those pens. Remember back in the day, they would have like a flock of seagulls or something. <laughs> anyway, I I didn't. Okay, go on. <laughs> I'm just, I, I mean, you got to be in my era to understand that. But yeah, let, okay, Doctor Omar, sorry, brother, we 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 cut you short. Let, let's go ahead. Hey, but he's saying why more black women should consider marrying white women. <laughs> he says it five times. He, I guess, he wants to drive his point home. Okay, Omar, go ahead. Two of the most powerful positions in the United States government will be held for the first time by black women. Kamala Harris, Ketanji Brown. Harris, as we all know, is vice president of the United States. Brown Jackson could soon be a Supreme Court justice. Both Harris and Brown Jackson also share a personal attribute that is equally noteworthy. Each of them has a white husband. Yes! Yes, they do. Yes. Oh, let's celebrate that. Yeah. Yes, they both have a white husband. <laughs> yeah, but, who, but who knew? Oh, I mean, who, they had, yeah, who knew? Who knew? But you, yeah. okay. And, and Kataji Brown Jackson, yes. Okay, they're they're successful with high, white husbands. What is the problem? Who cares? You know what? I I think these women would be successful without the white husband. Here, but, they the ones work went to school and built. Okay, yeah, okay, I mean, okay. But who, seriously, if you think they're in the right position, guys, listen. Regardless of your political views, if they're in the right position and you agree with what they're doing, do you care whether what their husband is? Seriously, who cares? I mean, and you, again, I don't do politics at all. Like you said, it doesn't matter political position. But when Obama was in, in he had a black wife too. Yeah. And what was it a problem? Well, it doesn't matter because it either way. I'm just trying to bring it home. But go on, go on, go on. Yeah, but I, I, I think he's stupid for even bringing that up. Are they the right women for the position, Umar? Or do you just care that they have a white husband? Seriously. No, I, I'm just, come on. But anyway, let's continue. All right, doctor of delusion, go ahead. This fact is significant. The effects of racism have left well-educated black women with a paucity of black male partners. According to the Brookings Institute data, black men are less likely than black women to have completed high school. Black men are less likely than black women to have completed high school. Black men are less likely than black women to have completed high school. And 50% less. Okay, let me stop there. He said 50% of black men are unlikely to com uh, complete high school. He said it several times over. Okay. Okay, I see a problem right there, right? He's a pro-black guy. He thinks black men should be with black women. Okay. All right. You keep repeating it, Umar. What's the, what's the solution? There, there should not be more women completing high school than men. If there is, there's a problem. Because if more women are completing high school, guess what? More of the women are educated, right? Right, after, right in high school. We're not even getting into the college aspect. 
that's a problem right there. That should be addressed, you know, within the community. I, I'm just saying. Would you guys agree with me on that? I'm just a white guy outside looking in. But but then so how how these black men that he said are not completing high school, how are they able to to secure the jobs that's needed in order to take care of a household successfully, financially they, speaking? They can't. They so, can't because here's the thing, you gotta complete high school. If you don't complete high school, you got two strikes against you right off the bat. But my thing is this, whether the wife is black, white, Hispanic, Asian, it doesn't matter. How is he going to do that in any race of house? Yeah, even exactly. working with a black woman, because the, the struggle is going to double. It's going to be double at that point. So it, it is. And, and you could throw in racism and white supremacy. And it, here's the thing. If you're already at the lower level and your men ain't complete in high school, how do you get how do you get ahead? So I, he just... starts off, his argument starts off with two women that have reached the pinnacle of, of this country. Yes. And then you drop down to <laughs> black men are not finishing high school by 50%. Umar, you are you are leading weak. I I just got to well, see what he's well, here's the thing that that's interesting. You said that because these are two women in the highest positions in our government, and they they made it all the way to the top. But but these guys can't finish high school. That's a yes, problem I'm, right there. That's what I'm saying. He's leading weak. I wonder. I'm so glad he said he's a doctor. You say. Yeah, he, he's a doctor of delusional. But I, I'm just trying to put it together. Okay. And he okay, says so maybe he has a fantastic maybe he, he's gonna snatch something out of the hat that we're not aware of. Yeah, I'm maybe, just maybe, he's maybe, he's got, maybe he's got a point we're not seeing. Let, let's okay. go ahead and get him. Maybe let maybe me put he, my lotes on. Let, let me put my lotes on. Hold okay. on, let me put my lotes on. Hold on. Yeah. Okay, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead to it, twin. Let's activate. Go on. All right. Wonder Twin Powers activate. There you go. Okay, let's do this. Less likely to have attained a four-year college degree. So we already see where this article is going, don't we, brothers? We already see where this article is going, don't we, brothers? We already see where this article is going, don't we, brothers? But let us indulge okay. this falsified narrative. According to the Brookings Institute, black men are less likely than black women to have completed high school, and black men are 50% less likely to have attained a four-year college degree. Yet, despite the shortage of suitable black partners, black women have also been the least likely of any minority group to marry outside their race. Black women are the least likely of any minority group to marry outside of their race, according to Pew Research. Rather than partner with men of other races, many heterosexual black women either don't marry or marry black men with whom they are not especially well matched. Let me say that again. Okay, let me stop it there. He's leading, he's the this is going. This is derailing right before I. I okay, go on. Okay, go on. Let, me, let me put this. He he is correct in what he's saying. Yes, he Black is. Women are most likely not to date outside the race. Most likely not to marry outside the race. Black women are loyal, race loyal. He he is so right. But here's the thing, ladies, break that wall, break that barrier. You know what, ladies. Go where you're celebrated. Go to the man that's at your educational level. PhD with GED. That's what he's saying. Yes, you will feel more enlightened. You will feel more security. Here's the thing. What he's saying is true. I mean, he, and he keeps repeating it. Okay, so 
if that's true, it needs to be fixed, right? If you, if you're poor old black, you want black people to be the best they can be, right? So he's stating facts, but he needs to give a solution. How do you fix it? How do you make black men the most educated? It should that be a focus or at least competitive, right? Okay. Yeah. No, I, I'm I'm just trying to get into his shoes. I'm trying to get into his mindset because if you really care about your people, you want black women to have the best option, right? But you want the men to be the best option also. Um, if you're in that segregated mindset, because you want the best of the best to be segregated in that point, right? Um, so, but anyway, I, I'm just... I'm just trying is to figure out. Is he pro black or pro black male? Because what he, so far, like I said, he's leading us to exactly to what our, what we were already thinking. He's, it's like he's proven our point already. But maybe he has more. So being fair, maybe he has more. But yeah, he's saying that it's a lot, as I said before, it's a lot of PhD black women. Settling for a lot of GED at best, black men, but more than likely not even that, not even they're not even graduating, not even getting that. So my thing is, if that is the case, he wants black women. If his his idea is to stay race loyal, he wants black women to continue to settle. And so therefore, he's not pro just pro black. He's pro black male. Because it's I, benefiting black men, right? Is that what it sounds? Is that what he's saying? You know what? I'm wrong. No, I, I I agree with you. I think he's pro black male. I don't think he's pro black. I think he's pro black male. I I think you're right. Okay. I think it's I'm one side. Okay, um, I'm gonna put my logs back on. Go on. I'm gonna put my logs back okay, on. Okay, let, let's finish what he has to say. I'm not going. Hey guys, I'm not going to go through the whole video because it's like forty minutes. But uh, it could right, be short if he stopped repeating the same thing. But I mean, he keeps repeating the same. He go he on. Does. And and hey guys, before I go further, here's the thing: he's going to say some sexual things, okay? So just keep this in context. Um, this is not what we agree on in this channel, but he's going to make some sexual in the innuendos and. He's going to make some sexual content. Um, that's what he does. So be aware of that, guys, before we go further. Okay? I'm just saying. But let's let's go ahead and see what he says. Rather than marry men of other races, many heterosexual black women either don't marry or marry black men whom they are not especially well matched. And these mismatched relationships, listen to the language they use. Listen to the language of the narrative. They call it mismatched relationships. So if a black woman marries a black man who don't have a college degree, according to the white power structure, she's in a mismatched relationship. And mismatched relationships contribute to African Americans having the highest divorce rate of any racial group. African Americans have the highest divorce rate of any racial group. In fact, the article says, mm -hmm. black women are the only demographic. All right, let me stop it there. He he is so right. He, he, here's the thing. But black people have the highest uh, divorce rate, right? And, and a lot of black men have sent me comments and saying that black women are the most Women are divor div uh, divorced than any other group of women. But here's the thing. There has to be a male component to this. But they do have the highest divorce rate. Um, God, I just lost my train of thought. Um, let, let me go back to this because I had a good point. Gosh, dang it. Black women are the only demographic. Black women are where this article is going, don't we, brothers? We already see where this article is going, don't we, brothers?
We already see where this article is going, don't we, brothers? But let us indulge this falsified narrative. According to the Brookings Institute, black men are less likely than black women to have completed high school, and black men are 50% less likely. Okay. Ralph Richard Banks, Harris. Okay, I lost my... Sorry. A decade ago. I published a book called it, Don't We Brothers, but let us in only demographic to have a higher divorce rate than marriage rate. A bit more than a decade ago, I published a book called Is Marriage for White People? First of all, that's ridiculous. Can anybody tell me why Dr. Umar? Okay, I, I, I think I got my um, train of thought back. Sorry, I kind of lost it. But he, he was saying um, um, that Gosh, sorry, I'm I'm lost. <laughs> um, but he he was talking about um, you know, the education level, how black women are are more educated than black men, and how uh, you know, and he kept repeating it, and he kept saying it. And here's the thing, there's a problem in that in itself, right? Because if black women are more educated than black men and uh, they're not completing high school, I mean, where do you go from there? You are you already have two strikes against you. You can't compete with anybody, regardless of the race. You know, and, and why is it that black women are finding a way to make it happen, finding a way to, you know, improve their education, finding a way to get that degree, finding a way to get in that boardroom, finding a way to move from the inner city to the suburbs to actually go beyond what they've ever had. Why can't, why can black women do it? but there's a lot of black men that can't. What is it? Because I see it in my neighborhood. I see it. I've seen it. I mean, for years, black women are, are, are amazing. They're actually making things happen economically, educational. What's going on? Because actually men are the stronger um, sex of the group, right? across the board, right? What's going on? And I'm not attacking black men. I'm just saying, why are black men, women exceeding the the men in their community? Um, that's, that's the point I wanted to hit. Um, I kind of lost my train of thought, but what is it? You know, and I, I have seen so many like growing up, I, I watched so many black women pull themselves from nowhere, you know, for the world, the world would consider be no no one or nowhere. Yeah. But financially speaking, um I I've wa I watched that. And I admire that so much for just from a little girl or throughout my life as teenagers, you know, I will look around and grab different aspects of different ones' lives and say, I aspire to be her and, and her and her. And like I said, it takes a village and that village can be everywhere and even watching TV or whatever. And so I watch that and you're right. But the sad part about it is, and, and this is not knocking anyone, if, if, you, if you yelp, then you're that dog that, or I wouldn't say dog, but you're only a hit dog hollers. So I, I never could find that black man around me that I said, would say, oh, I want a husband just like that. Now I was around a lot of, you know, good men, you know, but I never could find that black man when I thought that's the black man that I want as a husband, mm -hmm. never. 
And so that, that and, and I remember Ayanla saying, when she was on Oprah years and years ago, and I, it, it, the show is kind of vague, but the one thing I remember taking from that show when Oprah was kind of having her under her wing, Oprah said, or she said to Oprah, that with her four kids living in a, in a, a seedy area, and she said that she, because the bills were coming, and she said they started turning into different colors. She said when they start turning different colors, you know, you know what time it is. She said, but things got to turn it off. And she said, as she said to her kids, "Come on!" She got to buckling them up because she said we're going back to school. All four of her kids by herself. And I thought, wow, that that is that's huge. Four kids, all little small kids, and she was able to do that. Now this is financially speaking. I'm talking about, and I thought that's huge. Um, and, and she then talked about later on when she got married later on after she made money and her husband leaving her for her best friend, one of her, or her best friend, his best, his best friend, something she was always gone. And she excused why he did it, which was no excuse for me because she was the breadwinner and she was always gone and, you know, never made him feel like a man. And there was always all these excuses and all that. And at the end of the day, a man should always do what he needs to do to have his own and he needs to be busy making it happen instead of being at home, making excuses as to why he's doing what he's doing. I don't care who it is. And so when a man is sitting idle and he's when he's stagnant doing nothing, then he is going to go out and do stuff, whether regardless of what at the end of the day was his character. But yeah. that's at the end of the day, that's where it all that's the nucleus of it. It is his character. So whether it's financial you know, it could be, you know, his morals or whatever the case may be. It's going to show if it doesn't come out in the wash, it's coming out in the rinse. So this mess here that we're seeing right here. You can have the stats on anything and everything. I don't care if the weaker, like I say, the woman is the weaker vessel. If she's considered the weaker vessel and not putting her down, we're just saying her feminine one. She's the feminine one. If she's a weaker vessel. And if she could go out and make it happen, even with a household of kids, then where does that leave him if he's considered the one that's supposed to be stronger? He has no excuse. I don't care what yeah. book he's reading. Yeah. He can try to refute and, and, and dissect and excuse and bleed out and sanitize. At the end of the day, you don't have an excuse. And, and, and here's the thing. I, I'm going to iterate what you said. Mm -hmm. the, when it comes to black women, what I found is black women are the most feminine. Black women, you know, and this is me looking inside out. And this is what another thing that attracted me. Black women are so feminine. They they will embrace you if you show them love. And, and that's what attracted me. I okay. Maybe this is weird, guys, but it's not weird. It 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 it, it it's it's a blessing from God. And when I look at black women, back when I was dating, I, I just felt like I wanted to hug a black woman. I wanted to embrace a black woman. And you say, okay, yeah, you're, you're just, uh, that's lust. No, it's not lust. It's not. I wanted to hug. I wanted to embrace them because I, I, I could just feel the passion and the, the love. I, I just had that love, like, you know, and maybe that's why I hug my wife so much. It's like that embrace. It's like you kind of feel that struggle she's going through, but you don't know it, but you just feel it. It's like you just want to hug her and tell her, you know what? I love you. And 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 when she pours out her emotions, you just want to squeeze tighter. When, when, she, when that tear comes down, you just want to kiss her. When, when it, it goes there, it just, you just want to be everything for her. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Maybe I'm just going off on the No, way. it makes Maybe perfect sense. Oh, thought. my goodness. Is Sandy cooking right now and she's using onions? Oh, my goodness. Yes, it makes so much sense. <laughs> but it, 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 it's like, gosh, black women, you're so beautiful. And, and here's the thing. It's. Um. It goes so deep. And I, I remember my wife, when we were dating and she had problems, 
I would just hug her so tight and I would say, it's going to be okay. And I would just tell her I love her. And here's the thing. When I pray, I tell my wife, I, I want to pray. Can I just hug you? Can you be with me? Can And most people don't do that. They probably think I'm weird. They probably think I'm, but no, you know, no. God give me my wife. And it's like, when I go see the heavenly father, I'm like, Lord, I love you. Thank you for my wife. It, it's like my daughter, when she talks to me, when she visits and she has her special toy and that I give her and her blanket. And, and she says, Papa, I love you. And, you give this to me, and it's like I, I kind of relate that when I'm praying to God because God give me everything, and I want my wife to be there with me. God, you give me her, and I, I want her to be with me when I talk to you. Um, you know, I just think of that, and I'm just like, you know, it's just like. That is amazing, Brent. But anyway, you know, every, every real woman that loves herself or that wants more for her door, for anybody who wants more, that is what we are looking for. What you, what you express, what you're man enough to express. This is why we flock to your channel because you, you help again. When we look for that, we know that it's possible because you're well, man enough to express that. But, but here's the thing when people think I'm weird, but you know, black women back in the, I always thought black women were beautiful. I was just like, you know, I fantasized about black women. And it wasn't like a sexual thing. It was like I fantasized that I would have a black woman that was my wife, that loved me, that would hug me, that thought I was everything. That was my fantasy, right? Mm -hmm. and, and this gone, this was beyond the time I was dating. Mm -hmm. And even when I was dating, I had that fantasy. I was like, you know, they're, black women are awesome. I, I always thought that there was something about them. I just loved them. Um, you know, and maybe that's why I'm emotionally connected to them. Maybe that's why I give them praise. Maybe that's why, and people don't understand that. People think it's weird that a white man gives praise and says how much he loves black women. And they don't get it. But because it is weird. When something is weird, that means it's different. It's it's out of the norm. Yeah. It's unique. It's a unicorn. It's it, it is it is weird to people. Because if a person comes into a, a, a building talking to themselves and no one is there to 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 receive that that that, yeah. that message or that dialogue, they're acting weird or strange, or out of the norm. What you're doing to praise a black woman is totally in total contrast yeah. to what everyone else does. But, so yeah, it is you. It is weird to them. But, so, but, but the thing is, it, it, it's it's a, it's a good message. But, Instead but of here, doing it there, they'll beat you up. But they should be doing yeah. it. But yeah, it is weird to them. Yeah, but putting it in context, if you if you look at my life, my first girlfriend was a black woman back when I was sixteen, mm -hmm. and I've dated exclusively black women because that's what I was attracted to. And you could say you're weird because you're not attracted to women that look like you, but I'm not. Black women, um, you know, I, I was just attracted to, let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. And when I had relationships, a lot of relationships I had were awesome. There was a positivity about it, even when it didn't work, even when she wasn't into me. There was something positive. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes black women unique. And, uh, you know, here's the thing. The standard of beauty, when, when it comes to our society, you know what the standard of beauty is? Is a man's wife. Because when a man marries a woman... He picks her above all women. In fact, he lifts her up above all women, right? If he's, if he's doing it right, that's what he does, right? Mm -hmm. and, and here's my thing. People say, well, why do you praise black women? What? Well, here's the thing. In, in our culture, with, with white men, 
and it's not all of us, but what I've experienced is when we deal with women, we hold women to a high standard. We hold women, we lift women up. We put them on a pedestal. We do that. And here's the thing. You study history when it comes to white people. White women, you know, could be so mean and corrupt. And they have that liberty. Why? Because us as men that put them on that pedestal, we've protected them. In fact, if you study history when it comes to white people, they have sent people to meet their maker because there might have been a chance that they did something to their women. Think about this. You know, it's not right, but think about it. When In our culture, we lift women up above everything. Think about it. And when they say that I'm pandering or I'm uh, putting black women on a pedestal, yes, that's what we do. It's nothing out of the ordinary. It's nothing unnatural in our culture. We do it. My grandfather spoke about my grandmother like she walked on water. My father spoke about my stepmother like she was perfect. They put them on that big pedestal. They lifted them up. You know what? Has anything changed with me? No. The one thing that has changed is that woman on the pedestal is not a white woman. She's a black woman. And here's the thing. As we move on in society and interracial dating and marriages increase, you're going to find more black women on that pedestal that white men build than that white woman. It, it's happening as we speak. But here's you know the thing. What? That's, in right. our That's right. how we've been conditioned. That's how we've been trained. And you know what? It's easy for me because I love my wife. Of course I'm going to put her on a big pedestal. The one I built for her isn't even big enough for the amazing, beautiful woman she is. But think about that, guys. If you will try and understand what I'm, where I'm going, when you try to understand what I'm saying about black women, when I praise them, when I say good things about them, that's what white men have been doing for white women for centuries. Mm -hmm. Just the thing has changed with me, it's black women. Mm -hmm. Just know that. <laughs> but anyway, I just want to explain that because some people don't understand. It's true. But, you, you're right about everything you just said. Was at, I'm sitting here picturing in my head everything you're saying. Yeah, it, it's true. Right. It's just mm -hmm. the woman in my life is black, where my grandfathers and my father were white women. Think mm -hmm. about it. But my black wife holds the same position that women have held in my community. And think about it. And that's how amazing black women are. You can take a position from a white woman because of the beautiful person you are, the beautiful lady you are, and the attraction I have to you and the love I have for you. And it's not like you're kicking somebody off that 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 pedestal. It's just you're showing yourself to be the best option. That's what it is. I know the um it's it's an officer when I can't go into my my stud my um craft studio or uh, be in my place or whatever if my anxiety is up I have to go we talked about that um out to a, a gas station is not too far from my place and the guys are giving me a hard time trying to get talk to me and get my number what have you um if I if it I, or if I feel unsafe or what have you I could call this this cop. He gave me his information and I know I reached out to him not too long ago for something in terms of some protection and I reached out to him and it was a, a Caucasian lady answered the phone and I said he said for me to call him XYZ da, da, da. before I could get to the end you know I was I said okay thank you click and I knew <laughs> 
She <laughs> didn't like it. She, 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 she hung up on me. She didn't like it. Um, because I had to briefly tell her why I needed him, you know, because it wasn't an emer you know, what they call considered an emergency. And I needed to talk directly yeah. to him. And I told her that he gave me his personal information, you know, to to call him, you know, if he was on duty. Mm -mm. She didn't like, I can tell she did not like it. She was really nasty and curt. And then when I got towards the, you know, it was towards the end, that's when she hung up in my face. Oh, <laughs> man. You know, didn't like the, pr the protection, you know. So yeah. you're right. You're right. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff is going on, but you can read into this stuff. Um, yeah. I like that handle. Hi, Gene Solomon. Empath. Ecology. Okay. Okay. I like that. I like that. Um. That hand. Is that that? That handle empath is that eulogy? I can't hold on. Yeah, empathy, empath eulogy. That's really sharp. I like that. Yeah, it. I I think that single vortex in disguise. But anyway, um. <laughs> but anyway, let's continue on with uh, Doctor Umar Johnson, um, our our big brother, the pro black guy. Yeah. The, uh, Ooh, yeah. Look at that weird rat. All right. Yeah, I, I, I like that lumberjack shirt. Yeah, that's good. He he looks like that guy on the Brawny commercial. You you remember back in the 70s, Brawny, he had that check. Oh, yes. The, the, the paper towel guy. The paper towel yeah. guy. The yeah. Paper yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that looks like the kind of shirt he had. So, so he's pro African and a lumberjack. Mm -hmm. And he don't like Trump. Okay, that's cool. All right, let's continue. <laughs> ...considers the title of this book ridiculous. The title of the book is Marriage for White People. Why is that ridiculous? Because African men and African women are the oldest civilization. We are the first families. We are the first communities. We created the institution of marriage. We engineered the institution of marriage. So how can you write a book called as marriage for white people when we were getting married before there was any white people in the world? How can you write a book called as marriage for white people when black people were getting married? Africans were getting married before there was any white people in the world. Let us continue. Okay, no, let me continue, no, Dr. Umar. No, here's sir. No, I'm going in on this. Hey, here, here's the thing, Dr. Umar. Here's the thing. Okay, if African people were the ones that were established marriage, they're the first people. Okay, fine. That's cool. But you know what? If they're the ones that established marriage, why ain't they doing it today? Why is the black community... Only 25 to 30 percent married, Dr. Umar. Why is that so? And, and here's the thing if that's true, you should be teaching the rest of us how to marry people. But you know what? The black community ain't doing it, bro. Black love is at 25 to 30 percent. And if black people are African people were the original people, I'm not disputing it. Okay, you're probably right, but what are you doing today? What are you doing today? Seriously? If you're the founders of marriage, you should be teaching the rest of us. But you're not. You know, a lot of people in your community says marriage is just a piece of paper, Dr. Umar. Seriously? You know what? Back in the day, I mean, African people might have done spectacular things and wonder, and I'm not disputing it. I, 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 I want to believe what you're saying, but look, look, man, it's not happening today. In 2022, black people are, are marrying 25 to 30 percent. And you even admitted this, Dr. Umar. You said one out of four black women get married to a black man. So if you're the originator of marriage, what happened? I I I I just I, I can't I can't 
dude, I, 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 where are you coming from? Seriously. But you're the originator of marriage? Okay. Where's your marriage stats? Where's your marriage? Where's your love for black women? I'm a white man, and I married my wife, and I'm still married up to 28 years. Are you married that, that long, Dr. Umar? Do you have any baby mamas? I'm just asking. I'm not saying you do. But here's the thing. If you're the pros, if you're the originator of marriage, you should be teaching the rest of us. If you're the origin, original people, you should be teaching us how to live perfectly, right? I mean, people in my chat, seriously, shouldn't it? I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm a white guy. I, I'm not disputing that Africans were the first people. I, they probably were, okay? I know it wasn't a pasty white guy like me that was the first man. I get it. But here's the thing. If you're the experts, teach the rest of us. Good God, man. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you know what? I was sitting here. I, my wig shifted to the right. I had to fix it. You know what? Let's see. I didn't know. I, I, Check, can't. I, didn't. I, I can't. I can't you deal know, with it. I and just, you know what? You I, you just proved to us that you just can't. I, and I I just I do obeisance to you because you grabbed the wheel and you drove us home. Because <laughs> Umar, I, I I put my money and I don't even bet, but I put my money on, on my twin here. That's what the one yeah, guy is to run like, to. You're the expert on marriage, but. Your community is 25 to 30 percent. And I, you know, I'm not going in on black people. I love black people. I do. But dude, come on. You know, he spends more time on vilifying white people than teaching black people how to get married. Seriously. And I I, I happen to love black people too. I don't know if y'all noticed that or not, because yeah, I, I do. <laughs> I happen to love black people and I really love one. Really, I really do. Okay. Here's the thing. We love you too. <laughs> Thank you very much. I love you all back. I don't know how to how to join, but I, I Brent, you just dragged this man by his do his do rag. I, you wow. Uh, because here's the thing. I, I, uh you just gave us some education. Cause I, I, uh, wow. Uh, okay. So here's the thing. Um, DR Umar, that part. It's not where you, here's the thing. He did not instant, black people didn't institute marriage or what. I think God had a hand in that. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's okay. Umar, I think you want to go back to the drawing board on that one. Okay, sir. Um, so you big up in the wrong ones. And um the Bible doesn't speak on whether Adam and Eve was black, white, purple, orange, or it's just they just they they just shipwrecked us. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. And then too, uh when it comes to marriage, it was just two people. Not polygamy, two people that were joined together by Jehovah God. There were rules and regulations. There were decrees put in place in terms of marriage and how to honor one another. And then the descendants and all of that nature. And Eve was the mother of everyone. And of course, when um, there was destruction with the with the uh, with the deluge of water, like uh, Britt mentioned earlier. Noah and his family had to start over. Mm -hmm. Brent covered that very well. So they are them and their wives. They had it was eight of them. Okay. It was them and their wives. It it wasn't there, it wasn't polygamy involved. Yes. Okay, they all right. had a wife. Yes. Okay, sir. So that was pretty much covered. And that again stemmed from 
I have any father above. And it doesn't matter where you start. It as Brent covered so well, it's where you are today and where you end. So yeah, yeah that we yeah. I yeah, I'm yeah. Brent covered yeah, it well. And, and, and here's the thing. We're we're the same. We're one race. You know, you can study the Bible and you could say Shem was the Eastern man, you know, the Middle East, the Asian man, that's Shem. You know what? Ham was the black guy. He was the guy in Africa, in Egypt, right? And Japheth was the father of the Europeans. Guess what? That's the whole world right there. We're Brent, do you remember, Brent, do you remember who the one that was cursed? Do you remember the one that was cursed? For the, the, um. Well, there, there was a lot of curses in the Bible. No, Are you it, was about one, it was one that was cursed. For, we'll talk about that another day. But we'll, talk, we'll bring up Umar later on when it called talk about curse. Yeah. Uh, we'll, yeah. We'll talk about that later. But yeah, are, I, I are won't go into that. About, but Umar, are I'm you sorry? talking about him that was cursed? Well, actually, his son was cursed because of mm -hmm. his sin. And his lineage. Yeah. I'm sorry? Yeah, the... the uh, Canaan was cursed because of Ham. Yeah, his son, even though Ham did the sin, his son Canaan was sir, was uh, what, cursed. Color, what color was what color again? What, what, what race? Well, he was black, but okay, I, I, we're done. We're done. Swipe left. So, since he want to go there, okay, no, yeah, no, but but the thing is, but um, what my point is, he want to go all the way back and talk about stuff, and I'm like, that makes no sense. So if you want to get technical, that's what I'm saying. But yeah, it's I, not I that mean, black people are cursed. I'm just saying, if you want to go and do like little intricate stupidities, if that's a word, I just think I just made yeah. that up. But the and, thing and, is, if you want to do little strict, do that. Okay, go on, Brent. Go on. Go on. Yeah, and, and, and that's true. Um, and what it's saying is be, your father can, you're not, you're not, you're not responsible for the sins of the father. You're not, right? But here's the thing. What, what that passage is telling us is because of Ham's sin, because he loved his father naked, Noah, his son was cursed. His son Canaan was cursed. And, and what it's saying is the sins we, we do today, our, our kids will be cursed. You know, if if I do something wrong and evil, my 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 kids will be cursed because of it, even though they didn't do it. You know, because sin, and here's the thing: sin will curse not just your 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 children after you, but even other people that have nothing to do with you. But look what Adam and Eve we're we're paying for their sins. It's just going to yeah. continue them down. That, look yeah. what David with, with his, it was it was pro trouble at his the his threshold yeah. forever. It passed down. Yeah. That's just it's unfortunate. But Adam and Eve started that, and it's just a snowball effect in a, in a negative way. So my thing is, if you he really want to go there, we could go there. I mean, I'm not saying he and I or whatever the case. I'm just saying little small little details. They want to bring up little small details that has nothing to do with this man's book. So again, they're deflecting. But if you want to deflect, okay, well, let's deflect. If oh, you okay. really want to deflect. But I'm like, that? Really? <laughs> All, right. All right. God's child, yes, Brown says, Shim and Japheth were black too. So that would make me black too. If I look where they ended up because of the location. And I'm not saying that's not true, but. I mean, what? Who really cares? I mean, we're we're all this. Uh, no, do you do, do, do research? I always encourage research. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna research that because research. Um, the person in the comment said that Japheth. What did she say? Japheth and something else was black too. All right, was it Shim? J Japheth and Shim. So, uh, so we were all black. Is that what you're saying? And I'm not disputing that either. I I don't really care. My thing is I don't care what we were. 
I, I, I don't feel I'm superior because I'm a white guy. I don't. Yeah. Because that 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 we because we don't want to de get deviate away from what. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, it, there's it, 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 it's a, there's a point to this, but it, let's it, just it, say it was just it was just one of them or all three. The point is, there was a one. There was one of them was cursed, so that will make all black oh, people okay. if you want to go there. I mean, I'm just saying either or, but I always encourage research. Hey. I, I think what she said is my point is uh my point is is blacks are not cursed. I, I will disagree with you on that. Not only are blacks cursed, but whites whites are cursed. Everybody's cursed. You see why I said to you earlier why you have to be specific in what you say, because people will take yeah, something I, that you say. Maybe, maybe it's that, look, my, I, listen. Not, I yeah. just said black people are, I'm not saying black people are cursed. Yeah, My well, point well, is yeah. we will end up having to pay for the price of the ones that come from his lineage, right? Yes. Just like Adam but, and Eve passed down that, David passed down, we're all having to pay for the sins. We're all yeah. in some kind of way. Yeah, but I, let, you didn't say that blacks are not cursed. Yeah, let, let me address this though. Um, Look, here, here's the thing. Blacks are cursed. Whites are cursed. Exactly. We're all cursed. There ain't Thank no you. human being that's Thank not you. cursed. Thank you. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that Ham did his sin, so black people are cursed. Yeah, his son was cursed what he did. I get it. But we're all cursed. It's not. But I'm it's and, like and, what I'm saying about and, and Umar, he's going into little grabbing little bitty things to try to yeah. refute his doctor, and he knows yeah. the bigger picture of what this man is saying. Yeah, but here, here's the thing we're all cursed, exactly. I, 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 I'm not going in on black. I know some people have used this in a racist way that say that, yeah, Ham was black, so he's cursed. and no, no, I'm not saying that. Look, you know what? We, we, listen, I'm done hey, saying what I have to say. You can finish. I'm done. Sin, I will curse my children on. Seriously, and it don't matter your your color. It it it, it don't matter. Um, everybody's cursed. We're all cursed. Um, I'm saying that the whole blacks. No, I'm not saying that black people are cursed because they're black. No. No, I'm not. I'm not saying that. No, that wasn't my point. My point is, is our 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 decisions in life. We curse our children, regardless of the color. The thoughts were used to. Yeah, and and you're right. Hey, hey, no, you're right. People use that verse. They sure did. Because false religion people. used that. False yeah. religion used that, and that's yeah. the reason why things are the way it is, and that's what yeah. implemented slavery. But yeah. that, that's and, exactly that. That's it. But the thing is, no. that's the reason why people shouldn't listen to this mess that he's saying because that's going to push slavery too. But to to help black black yeah. men to do what he's doing, which is polygamy, which which is what she said earlier, which is what I agree with, because that's a form of slavery. Yeah, and, and what she says is true. You know what? And, and and you're right. And I didn't want to go there. I'm not saying black people are cursed and no, everybody no. else is. We're all cursed. We're all Think cursed. You know, Thanks Adam, Adam and Eve. Eve. Satan, Adam and Eve. Yes, we're all cursed. Yeah. Yes, we Adam are. and Eve took a, upon the fruit, so we're all going to die. We're all cursed. Yes. No, I I, I think I, I was just I was just making a point in the passage yeah. where God was showing an example. Hey, because your father does something, your kids will pay for it. And they will. Mm -hmm. And it's not their fault as children. Um, but yeah, I, I I I don't use that verse to because if I did that, people could point, pull things out of the Bible left and right where we're all yeah. cursed. It, it, it's and, not, and, and yeah, yeah. That that's that's yeah. Yeah, but they, they did use that to justify slavery, yes. Exactly, and, which is what they did. Yeah. And, and the plantation owners, they, they would pull out uh, parts of the Bible to justify what they're doing. Right. They did. I, I mean, um, 
That's an accurate what she what she said with the polygamy no. and with this. You join it together, and today that is modern day slavery. Trying to push that polygamy, stay race loyal, and put yeah. up with whatever. It's, it's pro male. It is not pro black, and even pro pro black. That is a that's a form of slavery because that make people stick to whatever at all costs, and it could be pro white, pro you know whatever, any anyway, any pro anything. It could be to a fault. And that cult-like mentality is no different from that whole, that mess that they they push today. Um, that cult-like mentality, it is not healthy in any aspect of life. Hey. If we are free moral agents, whether it comes to religion or free, Adam and Eve were free moral agents. That's why they're, they'd end up dying because they had a choice to stay faithful or not. We yes. have a, we free more that, agents to no. do whatever, and it shouldn't even be when it comes to race or when it comes to right. being with a man when he has more than one woman. No, yeah. we, no, yeah. this is yeah. what these, these show this uh rent content is for. Oh, it was yeah. this open yeah. option, and you know what? Um, God's child, yes, Brown, you're right, the curse. You know, you we can be redeemed, redeemed of the curse through Jesus Christ. And, and I'm not, I'm not picking right. on Ham and Canaan for that sin. I'm not saying I know people have used that verse to say black people are cursed, but if they look in the Bible, we're all cursed. Yes. That that's we're just all God just gives us a He's telling us, you know what, as a mother, as a father and a mother. If we if we indulge in sin, it will curse our kids. It will, regardless of the race. But but yeah, I yeah. I, I got her point. I I understand what she's coming from. But and exactly what she's saying is true. But we're true. just trying to say what, what Umar Johnson is saying, or jo whatever his name is, Umar. He was saying yeah. about the whole. This whole what he said, I'm like, you want to get intricate and get go dig into areas that's just really has nothing to do with this doctor, this how this doctor from Harvard is saying, which he's grabbing, he's trying to deflect and grabbing stupid. I mean, well, things that has nothing to do that doesn't apply, and it's like, why? Yeah, you know, we can grab we can grab things that doesn't apply, you know. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, but anyway, look, guys, we're all cursed. No one group exactly. is more cursed than the other. Yeah, no, that, not. that's not what I was saying. That's not what no. I was saying. But yeah, and you're I, right. And I, I hope nobody took it that way. Um, but I, I've seen people use that against black people. I see racist people yep. pull that out to try to, you know, hold certain things against black people, and that's not what it what the Bible's saying at all. Exactly. Exactly. Just saying the sin of the father will be passed down to the child. That's all yeah. it's saying. Acts 10 35 said, God is not partial. Anyone is righteous is accepted by him. So that means that's, no race is, is, right. is, is cursed. So, so don't read too much into that passage because God's just telling us, look, live right. That's so it. So you pass down a blessing instead of a curse. Because mm -hmm. we're all cursed. I, black people are cursed. White people are cursed. We're all cursed because we're all sinners. I, I mean, Adam and Eve cursed us all. So, I, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> he did. So, <laughs> That's so it in a nutshell. The human race is cursed. Yeah. Yeah, it is. So, uh, the best you can do is be the best you. Do yeah. things right. That That's that that's the, the thing. Yeah, um, and notice all your options. That's, yes. Those yes. two. Yeah. Let's continue with Dr. Delusional Omar, our big buddy. Go ahead, buddy. Okay. A decade ago, I published the book, Is Marriage for White People, that examined the decline in marriage across American society, especially among African Americans, and focused in particular on the predicament of black women. The book raises the possibility that black women like Harris and Brown, would do well to open themselves to partnering with men who are not black. So the author is an advocate of black women voluntarily practicing mental illness 
by indulging in the snow bunny crisis. The book advocates that you, my beautiful African sister, the book advocates that you, my beautiful African sister, would voluntarily indulge in mental illness by handicapping yourself and handicapping your children and handicapping your community by victimizing yourself through the snow bunny crisis. Okay, let me oh hammer on this. If that was narcissist, that was yeah. narcissism at its finest. Yeah, let, let me hammer on that. Look, Dr. Umar, and, and to my beautiful African sisters, you know what? My beautiful African sisters, like Umar would say, you know what? Look, ladies, I married a black woman. I've been married for over 27 years. I bought my wife a house. I provided for my house, for my wife. My kids are college educated. My oldest daughter has a master's. You know what? My wife don't have to work at all. I provide for my wife. You know what? And it's not the snow bunny crisis. And I'm a white guy. I'm outside looking in. And I've given my wife everything. So, Umar, what have you done for the women you love? Your beautiful African princesses, Dr. Umar. Do you have a baby's mama, Dr. Umar? Are you married to the woman you love, Dr. Umar? I'm just asking. You guys can research this. I'm not going to tell on the man. You know, he he definitely loves black women. He definitely is out for black women. He definitely loves them. But I tell you, Dr. Umar, the black woman in my, my life, I've given her house. I've given her all of me. I provide for her. I pay the bills, Dr. Umar. I've had three children with my wife, Dr. Umar. And they're all college educated, Dr. Umar. Like Ralph Banks, they're college educated. I, I'm married to my wife. I've only been married once, Dr. Umar, to my beautiful black African sister. What have you done for your beautiful African sisters? Do you have a baby's mama? How many wives do you have, Dr. Umar? Or is it a fashion show, bro? What is it? Do you really love black women? Are you putting on a front? Or do you need that grit money? I'm just saying. But he, it, you know what's so funny? Because that's what they say. In order for like cult leaders, that's what they do. They start off with, they'll, tell, they'll speak what's been said. Just like Satan did with Adam and Eve. Oh, is it true? And they, he spoke on exactly what God said. That you would know good and bad if you, you know. He he spoke the truth. D is it true? And he said what this guy, what this doctor, Harvard doctor said in his book. He said, my black, um, what did he say? African queen, so, so whatever. And then that's when he quoted. You know, he, he complimented him first. Quoted what was said. And then said, continued. Then he put down what the doctor put it in a way of saying, "Yes, he's um calling you, uh, he's attacking your your intelligence." That's the way he put it. Mm -hmm. Yes, he said that you were buying to the snow bunny effect, or uh, voluntarily um, settle for the mental illness. It's like that's what Satan did. Is it true that God said X Y Z? Then he said, well, you, if you partake of this, this fruit, then you will not be like him, knowing good and bad. So it's like he said the truth, but see how they put it, how, how it's their delivery. And the way the, a woman that's not on her toes, a black woman that's not on her toes, she'll be, she's going to say, think about him complimenting her, calling her a black African queen. Then I'm not going to volunteer in that. No, I'm not, I'm, I don't volunteer in mental illness. That she's going to take offense and start, you know. And it's like yeah. that whole PTSD, the Stockholm and PTSD, you know. It's going to be, she's going to volunteer. She's going to immediately jump at it and attack it. Whether to sit back and think, wait a minute, maybe there's some truth to that. Because and, what he said is true, you know. And, and, and here's the thing. Mr. Dr. Umar that loves black women so much. I tell you what, my wife has more resources from me as a white man, 
than any black woman will have from this guy. And he's got a lot more money than me. And, and you know what? I believe that to be true. What does he do for a living? What does this guy do for a living? I mean, other than his... I, I don't know. He, he He's trying to get his school together, which is taking forever, you know, to teach young black men to be good men or whatever. I don't know. But, you know, he, he's telling black women to give up their grit money. And I would say, black women, I, I love grits. And I've eaten them since I married my wife. Don't give up that money. Um not to that man. You know what? And and how long has that school that he's promised would be open? And I don't even know what it's about. I'm a white guy outside looking in. Okay, but, outside of the school, what else does he do other than be on here? I, I don't know. I, I just think he's a social uh, media person. You know, he's very popular. He's got a lot of following. Um. I, I don't know. I don't know what he does. He, he's pro black. Let me, let me wait a minute. Um, what's the name? Uh, Brent. It says yeah. okay, okay. AARP sports model. Go to bed. It's past your bedtime. Clearly, I'm impressing somebody because somebody's up listening. Okay, go on. You said what now? Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. I, I I just think he he's like a pro black guy. But here's the thing. He embraced dark sisters. Now it's like. Lighter sisters, you know, and his fashion show slash wedding, you know, mm -hmm. he was embracing the light, light skinned woman. I, I don't know. I, I, I think the man, when he talks about snow bunnies, this man is a snow bunny man. Th this mm -hmm. man, I, I, I bet he's laying with the snow bunny right now. When he says that's the problem of the black community, I, I, I've seen men like him. You know what? When I was in in the army, there was this, this this guy that, you know, would give me such crap because I was married to my black wife, and mm -hmm. he said, "No, that's wrong. You know, black people should be with black people." And and he was a Muslim guy, and I'm not attacking Muslims, but he told me he said it's not right. Th this clown ended up with a a white woman, and and she had blonde hair, and I, I'm just like, dude. No, they're full of crap. Dr. Umar is with a snow bunny right now. I, I would guarantee it. I see yeah. through that crap. I know I know black men love snow bunnies. Look, bro, look, look, Umar Johnson. I see you. I see you. I, I know you you keep talking about snow bunnies. You keep, but you're trying to make it look like it's a negative. You want one, you want a snow bunny, don't you? You want that you, you want that Becky with blue eyes and blonde hair. I know you do, bro. I get it. Just admit it. It's okay. I'll tell you where they're at. Seriously. Um, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, going here's the thing. I was told that and I, I don't like I said, I don't watch anything of, of his just going by reaction videos of other um content creators. But I was yeah. told that um he has his wife is biracial, but he considers her to be black. No, in fact, well, yeah, it, that's, it, what I, that's what I heard from other um, reaction videos. Yeah, and here's the thing: he said himself that if you procreate with a black person, whether it be a black man or black woman, your kids are black automatically, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I can I, I, I dig you. Dr. Umar, you know what? Okay. Once we procreate, we're all black, right? You know what? And, and you want everything to be pro-black, right? You're a black nationalist. You want black people to be together. Okay. So you should embrace interracial relationships because guess what? When we procreate with black, our children are black. Hey, I, I'm willing to... I, 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 I'm on board with you, Dr. Umar. Let's turn it black, brother. You know what? I got biracial kids. They're black, right? Let's do this. I'm on board. Are you on board? I know you love the snow bunnies. Seriously. Mm -hmm. But that that's how he looks on things. And, and here's my thing. Even if it... Even if... And it's so stupid because when you... 
you know, when you procreate with someone, a man or a woman, the child takes the, you know, the, um, the child takes the, you know, the DNA from both parents, right? Mm -hmm. They take the genes from both parents and, mm -hmm. and they share it, right? Yeah, so, some things dominate over others. Of course, if the man has dark hair and the woman has blonde hair or vice versa, dark will dominate, yes. There are certain traits that dominate, yes. And, and dark skin will dominate, yes. But you don't erase the other person's DNA. It will surface later on. Um, but his thing is, is he thinks... And he believes that black people are so superior that if they procreate with white people, they're automatically black. They're children, right? But here's my thing. Looking at it logically, okay, if you believe that, you would encourage interracial marriages, interracial procreation, right? Because then mm -hmm. everybody would be black. Guess what? You got your, your, your euphoria. You got your pan-African thing. You got your black nationalist thing. Everybody's black, right? You're happy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he contradicts himself because then he calls, you know, black and white people mixed black black race people, right? Mm -hmm. So th this guy's full of crap. I mean, he's just. <laughs> He's reaching. He just, but people will listen to him and, and, and spend money. And then, did you say the other day, someone said that he was trying to get people to volunteer their time or some blue collar workers to volunteer their time to come outside of the money that he is getting poured into his lap? Yeah, he he's using, and here's the thing this guy, in my opinion, exploits black women. He's using black women to make his living. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you know what? He, he he uses like, uh, you know, the sins of white people in the past. And he says, OK, white people, they're evil. They're they're quite cave dwellers. And, you know, they want to destroy black people. And people say, OK, well, racism happened. But he, he feeds on those emotions to make his living, in my opinion. OK, I don't well, understand it. I don't. But but here's my thing. This guy is a snow bunny addict. This guy loves snow bunnies. You can't tell me he don't. He talks about them all the time. Oh, yeah, like they're a problem in the black community. Really? Come on, dude. Seriously? You're going to blame it on, some, on a white woman that black men pursue? Really? Come on. <laughs> I'm just, whatever. But anyway, hey, Dr. O Delusional Lumar, you go ahead and continue. But, wow. Wow. But go, okay. Yeah, let's hear more of what he has to say. I, I like your pro-Trump pin. He, he loves Trump. He does. <laughs> let's continue. Ladies, don't do it. Ladies, don't do it. Black women, don't you dare. Don't you dare let a Neanderthal <laughs> crawl up in your heaven and spray his ancestors all inside of your woman cave. I said, black woman, don't you dare let a demon crawl up in your heaven and spray his ancestors all inside your man cave. I said, black woman. Don't you dare let a demon crawl up inside of your heaven and spray his ancestors. Lord have mercy. Ancestors, speak to me now. Okay, Dr. Umar. Okay. I don't know if the ancestors are speaking to you, but I'm going to speak to you right now. You Mama. know what? A woman's body is not a man cave, first of all. I don't care if she's black, white, Chinese. You know what? A woman's body is a temple, Omar. Dr. Omar. You know what the, the Bible says about a person's body? Men and women. It says your body is a temple. And that's men and women. It don't say that's all races, Dr. Omar. And, and here's the thing. 
you know what? Spraying inside a man cave. What do you think of a woman's body as a man cave? I, I, I'm just saying, a woman's body is sacred. A woman's body is precious. A woman's body is created by God. And, and for you to touch a woman's body, you have to be the husband to her. You know what? And, and you telling her not to let a white man in there? So what should she do? Let, let some loser like you in there? Seriously? Someone that don't want to get married? Someone that has babies, mamas? Somebody that requires a, a freaking resume to marry your stinking butt? Seriously? You know what, right? What I required of my wife is to love me, not create a resume, not to do a, a sideshow crap resume, crap freaking, oh, God, I, I, I can't even, th this guy's a disgrace. I, I'm sorry. You don't love black women. You don't even care about them. You lust after them. You do. And you, 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 guys like you will freaking Accuse us of white guys of lusting and fetishize women. You do. Look how you talk about a woman's body. A man cave? Really? Really? You're, you're, you're full of crap. You're a disgrace. Seriously. This is sick. This is disgusting. You should not talk about a woman's body ever unless it's your wife and you're alone with her crazy clown this guy this guy's and you know i can't i i sun kiss i i can't even this is just well but, but you know what here here's the thing at this point here's the thing he now like you said he never wants to he's not giving him any solutions any positive solutions any like you said resources or why don't he write a book and tell women, black women, okay, this is what you need to do to, to better yourselves or this, these are the men that you try to, black men that you should look for um, to better yourselves or to better the community or anything. He, none of that, but he's a doctor though. Not, nothing. Yeah. He's just saying, don't go and better yourselves. He just said, don't go, to, go towards the white man. He didn't say why. He didn't say, you know, if you do, this is what, I, nothing. Just don't do it. And he didn't say that what he quoted from that book, he didn't say that that, that, that doctor was lying. He never said that he was lying. Yeah, you're he, right. You he, know no, what? he didn't. He didn't. Because, and you know, he, no, he, he didn't. Because Satan didn't say that he was like, it's just the way that he, it was his delivery. You would know both good and bad because Adam and Eve found out about what good and bad offered. It didn't work for him, but he he soon they soon found out because they did find out what was good and bad. Same yeah. thing with this guy here. He never said that this doctor was lying. He just said that, quoted it, and said, now just don't go towards them and let them plant whatever in your quote unquote man cave. So your body belong to a black man. Again, he's pro male, male black. He is. Yeah. That's what he, and, that, and, he's, he's very sweet. But my thing is, at this point, Brent, no mean to cut you off. I'm not. He's been around long enough. He's shown his hand. And yet black women are still supporting him. So at this point, who do you blame? Yeah. And, and, and here's the thing. I, I'm going to delete this video. This guy is an ass clown. At, at the most, and I'm not going to entertain this. You know what? When, when you refer to a woman's body as a man cave, you're a loser. You know what? You don't respect a woman's body. You I, here, Here's the thing. Whether you're black or white, you know what? And, and I can stand up to this man, and I love black women more than Umar Johnson could ever dream of. Because you know what? I took in the black woman. I desired her. I married her. And I have a life with her, and I've never been married except to my black wife. 
and this ass clown is going to refer to a black woman from her 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 vagina as a man cave? Really? You piece of crap. Go away. I don't even want to cover this clown no more. I thought it would be fun to just drag this clown. To, you know what? He's a piece of crap. I, I don't even want to go in no more. I'm leaving this. And, and yeah. you know what? And people on my chat are saying, just let him go. And I'm going to because he, he's garbage. Yeah. You know what? Hey, Umar, you know what? Get in touch with Jesus. Pray to Jesus. You know what? You know what? You need to come to Jesus moment. And you better respect women. And, and that includes black women, the ones you say you love. And you know what? You need to marry black women before you sleep with them, you sorry, coward, crap, idiot. Let, let's dismiss this guy. This is crap. Sorry, sorry guys. I, I, I'm just, I, I, I just can't, I can't go into this. Because when I, I look into this guy and I research him, he's a fake. He don't love black women. Maybe he loves black men. He wants the best for black men. I don't think he even loves black men. I think he's a freaking opportunist. I think he's just making money. And, uh, you know, I think he, the way he talks sexually about a woman's body, I think he might be a pedophile. I'm not saying he is because I don't know, but I, I'm Anyway, I mean, I, 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 and nothing was surprising me with this. Sorry, I got guy. so wrapped in, in this, but I just can't. When when I hear him talk, it's just like, dude, I, I'm just like, you you don't love women at all, much less black women. It's just a paycheck for him. But anyway, you know, and I'm going to tell you, ladies, your body is a temple. And gentlemen, your body is a temple. My body is a temple. That's what the Bible tells us. And we should take care of it. And, and we should respect somebody else's body, you know, and we should not have access to each other's bodies till we're married. Point blank. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is. I'm, it is upsetting. I mean, it, it's just. But what's upsetting is the fact that he, he, this guy, has a platform because he's allowed to have one, and it's because it's working. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it is. It, so I, 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 body. Huh? Look how you describe a woman's body. A man cave, really? Well, later on, he said a woman's cave. But still, it's just a disrespectful. The only man that should be with a woman's body is her husband. I mean, seriously. Um. Yeah, he because he didn't even suggest any of that. He never. And the thing is, the least he could have said was, you know what? At least just marry a black man as long as he got his his high school diploma. I mean, he didn't. <laughs> what? Well, what? Well, the thing he of it is, for nothing. It, huh? And here's the thing. His argument was so weak and stupid. You know, if you're going to go in on this, explain how the black man is the best option, right? It, it, just come with some points how that's the best option. If that's what, because he definitely, he's a black nationalist, right? And people would say, you know, I heard on one of his shows, he says, yeah, people refer to me as Hitler because. I only believe in black. Yeah, that's wrong. He's not a Hitler. He's not in that. But I would say he's like a modern day David Duke. Think about it. You guys, you go in there and study David Duke and study Omar Johnson and listen to what they say. And you know what? They're, they're so much alike, it, it will blow your mind. They're both nationalists. David Duke is a white nationalist. He's a KKK member, right? He was like the peaceful KKK member, right? But he believes in white people being with white people. He's a segregationist. Look at Omar Johnson. He, he's a black nationalist. He says Pan-African. He believes in black people being with black people, segregated. So does David Duke. Study it, guys. 
don't just listen to me, but study these two men. And you're going, it's going to blow your mind how much they think alike, how much their ideology is so similar. I'm serious. Because I've listened to both these clowns talk. Same crap. Just one guy's white and one guy's black. Mm. They're both segregationists. They're, they're both black and white nationalists. And, and I, I've told you what a nationalist is. A nationalist is, is somebody that believes in the country. They're nationalists. Me, I would say I'm a nationalist, right? But I love black and white people and Hispanic people and Asian people because that's America. That's the people I love. But a white nationalist wants to be with white people only. A black nationalist, black people only. Think about it. Look into it, guys. You don't have to believe what I say, but you know what? This guy's toxic. He don't, I don't, he don't got the best um, intentions for black women. You know, but Ralph Richard Banks, he loves black women. And I believe that with all my heart because you know what? This man, you know, is humble enough, even though he has so much, so many degrees, even though he makes so much money, even though he's on the top of the economic ladder, he looks at men as equal. You know how I know that's true? Because he's telling black women, go for the best option. Whether it's black, white, or Asian. And, and that's true character. That That's true love. You know what, Brent, sad to say, yeah. if this, this, this doctor were to get his own YouTube channel or what have you, he, I'm sure he would get a lot of followers or whatever, but he would get more hate from black women than than um than any anyone else. Sad to say. Um because I was on someone's channel. I, I don't I, I was talking to someone. Mm. I was talking to my therapist. And uh, I was telling her about some of the things that black women do and say to each other and what some has said and done uh uh to me on you on YouTube thinking that this stuff would, would tear me down. And a lot of my pain come from the ones that I, I used to care about that I thought were that were supporting me. And this woman, you know, race loyal, only black men, but yet she's not been on a date in forever. Uh, okay, that, that, that's perfectly fine. But I was telling my therapist this. I said, something this, she said, because I vet channels very, you know, cautiously, very thoroughly. And I was vetting her channel from a distance. And I said, this lady says something. And I picked that much before I left her channel because I know I'll never go back. However, I did appreciate her saying this, black lady. She said, and this is one way I know how black women feel about each other in terms of them supporting him and spewing this to other black women, young girls, older. No, she said, what it, she said, when it comes to a, the hate of another, she said, when it comes to hating a black woman, no one can hate a black woman worse than another one. And I thought, wow, that's huge. And first you have to hate yourself enough to listen to this guy to be a black woman. You have to loathe yourself. And to take that self-loathing and to put it onto another black woman. That says a lot. That says a lot to me. Because I know Growing up, how I always that was that one I was such an empathic. I find this person has called themselves an empath that's laughable. But when I always was always, I never understood why I always had to protect different ones. I would get home from school super late because I always had to walk different ones home to protect them with my siblings, even with my egg donor, anyone around me. Even when I have to keep myself from overly protecting you, reminding myself that you're a man. <laughs> but yeah. um When it comes to black women, women, that's why they report they support his channel because it takes a self-loathing black woman to support that, and to yeah. attack not just white men or other race of men, but to to attack 
or to turn their backs on this, this black Harvard doctor that's married to another black woman and to support his channel. That tells me a lot about how black, because I was telling my therapist and I was going into details about what I have to do with myself every day to make sure that I don't sink into that mire and to live in amongst that, that, that debauchery. That to me, that's debauchery. And if I can't uplift another black woman or woman period, but especially my, you again, stay in my own backyard, another black woman, I don't want to be in her space because my thing is, I always say peace is not by default. It has to be, you have to, it has to be sought after and it has to be nurtured. So to take a black woman to go into his space and be willing to take that fecal matter in and to, to, to nurture that, to believe that and to spew that onto another one, another black woman and to get mad at her and to, to torture her and to be up at all times of the day or night and seeking out other black women to take them down because they don't loathe themselves enough to believe that. That is out of bounds in every yeah. aspect of her life. And that is what concerns me. So whenever an, another black woman attacks another black woman or attacks me even, whether it's overt or covert, that's, it's, it's actually laughable. So, yeah. and, you know, I say what I have to say, then I back off and I'm like, I, you know, my thing is, th you know, th thank you. Because that lets me know whether I've progressed or not, or what I need to work on or not. But the thing is also, it saddens me because these women no doubt have loved ones around them that probably looks up to them or listen to what they, this guy is telling them and they're twisting it and they're sitting back going, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's just gonna continue on. That's that's what's sad. Yeah. And, and let me say this, it, it's getting kind of late, but I'm gonna open up the chat. Um, Guys, this show didn't take a, a turn like I thought. I, I thought I was going to drag Umar and we're going to make fun of him, laugh at him. But some of the stuff he said just disgusted me. It's draining. And, hey, if you allow and, it. Yeah, and when I think about black women, I'm just like, I, I'm disgusted. I'm, I'm, I'm heartbroken. And, and here's the thing. You know, um, I know people don't believe me when I talk about black women, the love I have, but it's so true. Guys, ladies, you've been my preference since the 1980s. In fact, I would say the 1970s. Do you realize how much of an impact you have? Do you realize the blessings you have? Do you realize this? I, I just... It, it frustrates me because I see it in my own eyes, but people don't see things through my eyes. I get it. But, you know, and I express how I feel. But if you look at me and my wife, we've been married so many years. And that's true love. And nobody would ever... And I mean, ever. They would believe Umar above me. They would be believe uh, Kitten Hills be, before me. They would believe all these expert dating coaches on YouTube before me. But I got 27 years of marriage. I've broke my back for my wife. I've done everything. And I'm not complaining. I embrace it. Um, but the thing of it is, is when I talk to you guys, I want to promote love. And, and, and here's the thing. Mm -hmm. My thing is, is we need to stop getting caught up in race. We need to stop getting caught up in people that look different from us and just date each other and at least get to know each other because mm -hmm. you're going to find true love. And it's not going to be somebody that looks like you. It didn't happen with me that way. 
of course, you know, I was, you know, cling to black women since five years old. So, of course, it wouldn't apply to me. But the thing I'm saying is, guys, open up your options. Date out. And, and, and black ladies, when you open up your options, us as men get, you know, a better end of the deal. We do. Because what you ladies offer us is, is priceless. We don't get that from Becky and Karen. And I'm not, I don't have hate for my white sisters, the ones that look like me that share the same DNA. I love them. I do. Mm -hmm. But ladies, you, you got so much more to offer and you don't even know it. You know, and, and you got a unique beauty to you. You do, but what's inside your heart and soul, it can't even measure to other women. You got all women on earth beat when it comes to that. You do. And and that's why my preference is black women, because you're carrying the day, because you are a more of a blessing, because you're more spiritual, you're more traditional. And you got a bigger drive and you're more passionate. Why wouldn't I go to a woman that's like that? Seriously. You, you know what? And, and men that don't gravitate to you, they don't know about you or they're stupid. Seriously. And you know what? I, I could marry black or white women from now to the the cows come home. I, I, I make a good living. I, I I got a lot of resources. I don't have to step out to black women. But you know what I do? Because that's the best option. That's the best quality of women. That's the most beautiful women. I, I don't go to women as a second resort. I go to women as the first choice. Black women, you are the best. You are the most beautiful. You are the best option. And here's the thing. My wife is black, and I've been married over 27 years. So you know you're, you're, oh, God, I can't even, I, I just, maybe it's the trolls that tell me so much stupid crap that I'm pandering. You know what? Yeah, I'm pandering. You know what? I've been married to a black woman for over 27 years. Call it a pander. I tell my wife I love her every day. Call it a pander. I tell my wife she's the most beautiful woman on the earth every day. Call it a pander. You know what? But there are so many men in this world that can't say that they love black women more than me. How many men have been married to a black woman that they desire for over 27 years? And when it comes to me and my wife, it's beyond desire. And when I speak about desire, it's not the physical. It's not the intimacy. Yeah, that's part of it. But it's everything. And that's why our marriage has lasted. And, and, and here's the thing. When, when I say I love you, black women, listen to me. That means I love you. That, that ain't no pandering crap I'm shooting down you. Look at my marriage. And you know what? People have researched me. I've been doxxed. So you could look at my what I make and who I'm married to and all this crap. Mm -hmm. But you know what? You find out I'm not lying. You can't, you can't dispute that. And you know what? The doxing I've been given, because I see it. Mm -hmm. nobody's gone public. Why? Maybe because I make a good living. Maybe because mm -hmm. I've really been married to my black mm -hmm. wife over 27 years. Maybe because my all my kids are college educated. Maybe that's what it is. But you know what? I'm not going to lie to you. When, when I tell you something, it's truth. And black women, you are the best option. Black women, you are my preference. And, and, and let's kick that to the curb. You're not my preference. I, I will not have nothing but the black woman. Straight up.
Yeah, I'm biased. Yeah, that's all I want. Do I hate other women? No, but that's all I want. Mm -hmm. It's there. Anyway. But, I mean, that's the way it is. You know what? People only hate on what they admire. That, yeah. That's it. They only, you can only tear down something that's above, that, that you consider to be above you. So whether a person attacks you, like you said, they dox you, they, you know, they, they email and say harsh things, you know, to you, whatever no, I, the case, they try I, to, I you know, come at you in all kinds of different ways. It doesn't matter if they want to, you know, segregate from you in any kind of way. It doesn't matter. You're going to win anyways, because clearly those people that feel they got to speak against you, say harsh things or or doctor said, doctor, anything negative. Those people feel they have to tear you down, whether it's behind the scenes or right here on your show. They or any, just with anybody in life, just any of us. If a person feel they have to reach to, to, to tear you down, it's because they feel they have to reach up to pull you down. Clearly, they know they're underneath you, so they have to reach up from elevation. I mean, from underneath you to to from, to elevation to try to snatch you down because they view you that way. Yeah, they view you that way. So I, I personally would tell you, say to you, tell them thanks. I do. Yeah, I do. Thank you, thank you. And by the way, thank you for calling me a model. I think I'm cute too. Thank you. I'm sure I can pull yours. But the thing is, that's what you say. Yeah. Just tell them thanks. <laughs> Celebrate it, because my thing is uh, clearly these people feel that you are you're above them, so you they have to reach up and snatch you down somehow. I had to learn that the hard way. So when I looked over my life, I said, "Oh, well, I want to be me too." I didn't see those things, but I want to be me too. So yeah, you should want to be Brent. I see why. Yeah, no, it, it just. Oh my God, I. I'm sorry, guys. I I didn't mean to drift in this rant, but I I'm seeing things that are just so disgusting. And, and like I said, I've been doxxed. I I've been sent three emails that that can pinpoint the dollar amount I made on my taxes last mm -hmm. year. You know, and that's scary. You know what? I got, I got, a, I got a gun safe in my house. I got a, so many weapons. And, and you know what? In my community, there, there's police that live there. And you know what's funny, Sunkist? Here's the thing. You know, people in the inner city have less guns than people that live in the suburbs. But the suburbs are more safer. Mm -hmm. it, no, it, it's true. Because in the neighborhood I grew up in, I grew up in the inner, inner city, a, a crack, a crappy neighborhood. And when I moved up here, we have more guns up here than we did back there. Mm. And we're more safer here. Tell me that don't make sense, right? Mm -hmm. You know, they say Chicago has the most strict gun control laws, right? Mm -hmm. But you know, they have so many, many gun violence things going on. I don't know. But I don't know. I don't know why I even went off into this. But what I'm saying mm -hmm. is, that, mm -hmm. ladies, open up your options. Please do, because you, you will find more options. And you will find someone that loves you. He might not look like you, but... If he loves you and gives you everything, is that okay? Ladies, let me ask you. Um, is a white guy being married to you okay? Is an Asian guy okay? Is a Hispanic guy? As long as he works hard for you? Is a Middle Eastern guy okay? A Jewish guy? If they give you everything, is that okay? Or is the black man so much superior to all of the rest of us, that you just got to have that? I mean, we all got our preferences, right? Mm -hmm. But but think about it, ladies. There, there, there are attractive people in every racial group, right? Mm -hmm. 
Unfortunately, I'm not one of them, but <laughs> you know, but there there are attractive white guys, right? There are attractive Hispanic guys, Asian guys, right? Ladies, come on. What do you want in life? Do you want a man that looks like you that you got to build with? Or you want a man that loves you with all his heart and, and he strives to give you everything and don't want you to have to stress yourself out that you could just stay at home and be a good, good, good mom or, you know, and there's some situations you both might have to work. I get that too. But there are men that love you. Black women, there are white guys that love you, a lot of them. There are Asian guys that think you're the world. There, there are Hispanic guys that think, I want to I wanna love you, but I know you don't love me. And, and here's my thing. I've been attracted to black women ever since I was five. And you know, the first black woman that, that I asked her to be my girlfriend and she said yes, do you know what that did to me? That made me feel like I won the lottery. That made me feel like a puppy, you know, a bouncy puppy that just bouncing around and happy to see you that just loves you. That's that's where my spirit was. And you know what? Every time I dated a black woman, I felt that same way. Did you know that? And now that I'm married and been married over 27 years, you know, when my wife hugs me and tells me she loves me, I have that same feeling. I feel like one of the life, the lotto of life. I feel like that bouncy puppy that's just so excited that I'm just so happy you're there with me. And black women, you bring that out of us. You do. So if you can bring it out of a white guy from a white neighborhood, from a white community, from a white state, from a white country. Think about it. And I love you more than any other group of women. That that should tell you something right there. You are the standard of beauty. And you know what? As time goes by, more men are going to seek you. More men are going to date you and marry you outside of your race. You're going to be the standard of beauty. You already are and just don't know it. You know but, what? You know what, Brent? You're you're so right. I'll, I'm gonna tell you. I didn't tell you this, and then I want the ladies to go to go along with what you just said, Brent, and the ladies in the chat. I was on my I was on my way into the store to get something I didn't need, but that's okay for another store, another day. But I was almost way in the store yesterday, and as I was going in, it was a guy coming out. Oh, it was a white guy. You could tell you just left the barber, a nice clean cut. And I said, oh, I said, I like your, uh, he looked at me and he kind of, you know, turned and, and looked away. And I said, I like, you look nice and clean cut. I like your beard and your haircut it looks really nice. He said, thank you. He said, I love your hair. Of course I had the big Afro and he said, I love your hair. I said, thank you so much. I thought of you all immediately. I thought. I mean, I would. I, that, I mean, I always know certain things, but I just thought about the shows that we've we've had. And I said, he looked and he kind of, you know, he looked at me. And he turned off, but when I let him know that I noticed, and I just thought about the shows that we had, and he was letting me know I noticed you too, you know. Um. Then afterwards, I was like, what was I was rushing on oh, because I was rushing in store because I had another point, but I was rushing and I said, I was like, I noticed, and he was like, I love your hair. And I said, oh, my goodness. He really, he did notice me. But it was what you just said. A, fre a fearing that we may not like them, you know, like them, you know. And I was like, wow, that, that, for me to be conscious of it, that was, that was really huge, you know. But, yeah, he was checking me out, and I had no idea that he was even really looking at me like that. I just thought he was just like, oh, a human, and kept walking. But he had noticed my hair and everything. Yeah. He just was afraid to let and, me know. And, and here's the thing, ladies. I, I'll go back in my younger life before I got married. When I was around black women, um, 
you know, and, and I was attracted to him. I wanted to be with him. And uh, when I would date him and I would get a hug, I would embrace it so much. I would just be like, yes, this is what I want. And, uh, you know, I wasn't even thinking about what I could do with her sexually or nothing. I just wanted to hug her. It was just like I wanted to tell her I love her, even though I don't know her. Um, that That's where my heart was. I was just like, um, and, and my parents knew that back when I was little. They knew how I felt about black women. And, uh, you know, in a way, I still feel the same way. Even black women that are just my friends that I work with, I, 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 I just have a certain feeling for them. I want to see them do good. I want to see them, you know, be successful. And even when I look at black women, like from a distance, I don't even have to know them. If they're living good, they're happy, and I see it, I embrace it. I actually, it makes me feel good. It makes me feel happy. And I don't even know them. Tell me that's weird, right? When I see black women at work, you know, move up and get promoted, it makes me happy. And I don't even have to know them. I don't even have to have but why do I feel this way? Why do, Why am I excited when black women move up? Think about it, guys. Think about it. I'm a white guy, right? I'm outside looking in. Why do I feel this way? And, and I'm not trying to get you on my life story. But here's the thing. There are so many white men like me. But I feel this way. Is that valuable? And, and don't look at how I look or how old I am. And, but just think of a white man you're attracted to. If he feels this way about you, think about it. How valuable is that? Because I'm telling you, a white guy that thinks about you like that, the first opportunity you give him, he will, he will marry you. He won't. He's not going to live with you and see how it works out. He will marry you. Mm -hmm. and, and here's the thing about us white men. We marry women more than any group in America. Think about it. And a lot of us love black women. Though the media won't tell you that. Mm -hmm. But I would say at least 48 to 50% of white men want to date black women. They do. They tell me all the time at work they would love to date, date black women. They even ask me how can they approach them, right? And these are guys you wouldn't even think would even be interested. But here's the thing. Things are happening in our world today you don't even see. And because you don't see it as so crazy obvious, you don't believe it. But let me tell you this. When a white guy steps up to you and says, hello, how far does that go? You say, where's the white man at, right? And, and, and I would say, I would say to white, the black women, have you dropped that hanky? And I would say to white men, do you know where you're at? Who's available? I don't know. Anyway, I, I, I'm drifting. I'm sorry. But this is what's in my heart because I, I think interracial uh, marriages are going to increase. And I believe that's the strongest marriage we have. Because people ain't it are so serious and, and want so much from each other. Not that they want so much for each other as they want to give each other so much. Mm -hmm. That's probably more accurate. Mm -hmm. 
But it's good that you gave this because after that video of uh, Umar, Umar, whatever his name, Umar, um, him, um, yeah. that what you said is needed. I mean, that you have no idea what you, you're just saying is needed. You know, trust me, is needed. Um, so. And anyway, I'm going to drop the link because I'm about to fall asleep because but I'm passionate on this, guys. I really am. Um, let me drop the link real quick. Uh, if you guys want to come on, I'm going to drop the link. It's not going to last long because I got to go to bed. Yeah, there's a link. Yeah, Sunkist, I'm going to drop the link, and then if nobody comes on, we're going to shut down and go to bed. Okay. I'm tired. And, and you know what? Listen to this guy speak. It, it drives me crazy because I, I just want to tell him off because he's not really helping black women. But the thing of it is, he's living on black women. That's, I mean, that that's not anything new. I mean, yeah, but you'd be surprised of the content creators that that support him. I mean, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. No, I get they, it. They, they, they refer. I mean, they they refer to him and everything. It's it's he's he's um known and and I like I said um I'm not really I'm not really familiar with a whole lot of content creators. I'll go on somebody's channel or go on somebody's chat and go, oh, yes, I'm familiar with this. And I'll go, no, wait a minute. No, I'm not. You know, because I'm not. I'm not. And then I'll, I'll back out like, oh, no, I'm not supposed to be here. You know, but for me to know about this guy, you know, and I'll yeah. go in and, and be thinking they're talking about one person because then I drop the names. And here I'm talking. I'm talking about another person. So, yeah. But th this guy. Yeah, he. he mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I and I, I mean, like the content creator because they don't, they just may have his picture up or use him, his clip or something, but they don't just like use his, react to his videos a whole lot of it, but they really support him. Yeah. But I mean, they, but they're talking about celebrity stuff and all that. So, but I, but I like the content creator because they're, they're just talking about, you know, everyday stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I want to welcome, uh, uh, God's child, a uh, God's child, yes, Brown Chrissy. Welcome again, Corey. Hi, Chrissy. Hey. Hi, Sankis. Hi, Brian. I'm fine, thank you. How are you guys? I'm good. good. Hey, Corey. Living the dream. <laughs> All right. Hello, Sankis. Hello, Brent. God's how, how child, yes, Brown Chrissy, Arlena. I yeah. Yeah, and, uh, hey, I want I want to hear from God's uh, child. Yes, Brown. <laughs> hey, young lady, good to see you. Welcome to the channel. Hi. Hi. Just a minute. Good to hear from you. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yes, we can hear you. Hi, Miss Cook. My daughter hey, told me this. I'm, I'm, head. I'm not real savvy when it comes to the word. That's so sweet. Mm -hmm. Mama. Mama. Mama's here, baby. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Okay. Uh, God's child, uh, child, yes, Brown. How are you, mm -hmm. young lady? Go ahead and uh, speak. You're, you're on the. Hi there. Hi. It's good to have you on board. Okay, I, I wonder if anyone has any suggestions for me. Thank you. It's good oh. to be here. Um, I, I honestly, uh, things are just kind of lagging on my end. I don't know quite how to handle that. So, uh -huh. any suggestions? As far as the audio is concerned. Oh, you want some suggestions for the audio? Yeah, I it's it's like there's an echo. Everything's coming late. 
Yeah, but I, I think what's happening is you were watching YouTube and you hit the link. Mm -hmm. So you got YouTube and uh, StreamYards open at the same time. Okay. So I, I don't know if that's mm -hmm. the case, but I think that's what's happening. So you're getting a double feed where it's going out one device into another. Does that make sense? So close your YouTube and then it should fix it. Okay. Yeah. Let me know if it does. Okay. I think I think it's working now. I think it's good. Oh, okay. Okay, I got it. All right. Well, All right. I, I just, uh, I want to say hello to everyone. Um, I'm glad to be here. I, I would like to apologize if I caused any confusion earlier with my oh, comments. No, you oh, okay, good. I, I, I want everyone to know I just respect you so much and I appreciate everything that you offer and bring Sunkist. I, I really appreciate you and I respect you very, very much and just thought I'd lay that out <laughs> oh okay who no this yeah. is, this, who's this speak this is son i mean god it, this god's is god child, yes, god's, brown. Brown. And god's child yes brown god's child yeah. god, brown hold on, let me get my glasses because i can't see yeah. no god child yes brown you guys yeah. child, yes, brown. okay no yeah. your apology and and i apologize if i cause a stir or a, a, a um anyone to to think anything different first of all i always encourage research i mm. always encourage i don't like for people to just take someone's word especially when it comes to a subject that's, is, uh, that's a, as delicate as the bible always mm -hmm. research mm -hmm. no, that's why right. so many different religions people just listen to what's being said however when um i'm big on listening to everybody listen to every word but i, I tell brent that i said i think because i listen to every word or i try to at least and and then I think I always think okay, I, I I I'm gonna try to grind it to the bone, and then I always think people was gonna, I'm gonna follow that, and I don't want anyone to be misled. So that's why I may take a whole lot to, to go all around here to, just to get to here. Right. I um mm -hmm. never do I want someone to take my every word and just say that's it. I want I always say that's why I always refer to the scriptures. If I don't refer to the exact verse, I'm gonna take you to that chapter. And it has mm -hmm. everything has to be in harmony. But no, you didn't you didn't offend me personally. Okay. It was more yeah. so I was frustrated about this this well uh, about him. I was gonna say something mean. That's yeah. that's not <laughs> but about I was more frustrated about him. Um, yeah. that's what it was. No. It was it was we're, him. It had nothing to do with you forgiving because you have the right to think the way oh, you mm -hmm. want. It was yeah. that guy. You let know me address this too. Let me address this too. Hey, uh, God's child, yes, bro. You know what? I know, I know where you were coming from with the scriptures because I you, see you, you were right. Yeah, people manipulate that certain scripture. When it comes to Ham mm -hmm. and his mm -hmm. son Canaan. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Right? They try to they try to portray it in a racial thing. Mm -hmm. I I do that, and I understand that. I. It, it, and it's so disgusting because it's not even about that. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't. I when you were putting your comments, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, and, and I got your back. And you know, I, I I love you. And it's not about that. It's just mm -hmm. what, what what God is telling us is like mm -hmm. our sins mm -hmm. will will produce a curse. From our mm -hmm. for our children, mm -hmm. yeah, and, and we're all cursed. You can't get around it. Um, look at Adam and Eve; they cursed the whole world. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so yeah, yeah. Him, he did wrong, and God punished his son. Mm -hmm. And it seems kind of unfair, and we don't understand it, mm -hmm. but. You know, we're all cursed. It is it's like nobody's free from it. So right, to say that one yeah, group is and the rest of us are it is it is a lie. It's mm -hmm. so hypocritical. But yeah. 
you know, I, I looked at that and I knew exactly what you were talking yeah. about. Yeah, and, and I don't and, want you to think that I don't understand because I agree. Everything you said with, with the polygamy, that you're dead on. That's why I, I zeroed in on your comment yeah. and mentioned it. With the slavery, zero in on everything you said, I concur a billion percent. But I didn't want to get too far off into away from what this guy was saying because everything right. that you said, that's what he was spewing. And that's why mm -hmm. I was saying black women need to pay attention to what he's saying because it actually, what you said married what this guy is saying, which mm -hmm. is like a modern day um, slavery. Right. In the black yeah. Yeah. So yeah. That's why I was like, yeah, you know, but I, I was like, but let's not get into the smart, because this guy was taking like what trying to, he was manipulating. And he mm -hmm. was trying to um, deflect. And I'm like, let's mm -hmm. not get away from what we're talking about with this guy. I don't want, because yeah. you got onlookers that are trying to deflect along with him so mm -hmm. that they can try to figure out how could they attack Brent or mm -hmm. me. And, or yeah. the yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and no, what? I'm not upset with you. I was frustrated with him and I apologize for that. But I'm more yeah. upset with you. I'm sorry, Brent. Yeah. You were saying what? <laughs> I, I looked at this. I looked at this. Uh, God's child, uh -huh. and here's the thing, I, I look at this and I'm like, and I look at my family's life, mm -hmm. and you know what Ham did or whatever? Mm -hmm. My family's did a lot worse than what he did, so, you know, that breaks me down <laughs> in humility like you wouldn't believe, so, right. yeah, yeah. Don't, don't, don't get caught up in that scripture. Yeah. What I'm saying is, us, yeah. us, us we need to do right so we don't curse our children. That's what it's saying. Yeah, because he, this guy, that guy, I'm like, and he has, but I, yeah. I guess whatever works, mm -hmm. I mean, but, if it's, in his world, if it's yeah. not broken, why fix it? I mean, like they said, you have a, a food bump his head in the black community. <laughs> so if he got these women and paying them, yeah, and that's but, the world. That's that's his business. Then why why change it? It's working. Yeah, but they do anyway, because they want their validation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But I, anyway, <laughs> um, hey, God's child. Is, but mm -hmm. anything you want to speak about, yeah. young lady? I just yeah, want you to yeah. feel comfortable that we're not judging us. Yeah, no. Group. And my, I, I'm, I get too passionate, and then my fa hands and facial expression. I just, you know, like, oh, see, like this. This is not well, kiss, It's okay. But just breathe. Yeah, just it's breathe. really fine. Just breathe. I honestly, Take a big, my deep biggest breath. concern it's was right. I did not want to come across as a troll or any. I know you've had a lot of. No, we didn't, we didn't um, even see that no. like that. Oh, good, good, good. No, well, we're um, really, really patient, really tolerant with people mm -hmm. in the chat, unless yeah, you're a troll. No. Then we just leave a footprint on you. <laughs> well, you know, I will say one of the few first times that I did come in and I had disagreed with someone, I believe that it was just about a, a simple thing. I, I believe they put me in timeout. It said you, that you I said one you know, child. Would you say it again? I, I, I disagreed with a moderator and they silenced me for. <laughs> I, yeah. I thought. Well, it's kind hey, of odd. Yeah, we're just getting used yeah, to each other. That's normal. Okay. <laughs> hey, don't, don't <laughs> worry about that. Hey, okay. Okay. Here's the thing with the timeout. Don't, uh -huh. don't even sweat that. that <laughs> okay. That's like a, hey, I'm not comfortable with what you say. So I'm going to put you in the timeout. <laughs> Hey, I've been trying to give Empath Eulogy a timeout the entire time, but I can't make the thing work. Hey, you, 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 you know how much? Hey, it wasn't me. Did you see her comment? It wasn't me. It's always you. No. Hey. Empath Eulogy. Here's the thing. My thing is this: jealous much? <laughs> oh, come on. She she knows I love her. It's no big deal. I do this all the time. Here's the thing, guys. Okay. You know how many times me and Corey have timed out each other? So don't <laughs> talk too bad about it. We, we do it all the time. So we don't sweat the good. small stuff. Yeah. No, it's you know, here's the thing. No, we're good. And here's the thing, you guys. If I should ever get my, my channel, I have certain ones in mind that I'm going to be like, y'all, y'all, if you don't get over to my channel, 
<laughs> what I'm going to do to y'all is going to go viral. So, it, and, and, and God's child, you're one of the ones I would love to come. So, it's hey. not, no. And please excuse, this is just my, everybody on, in my family tree, this is just what we, we should have been Italians, you know? We Sun really kiss. Sun kiss when hey. I show up on your when I show up on your channel, you better grab your earrings. Oh. Hey, 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 Sun kiss. Huh? Hey, if you start a channel, I, I will you give me the what, what's it called the I don't know. I'm the golden thing for the great white king, of course. <laughs> okay, there you go. I I wasn't thinking like that, That's but I was. Right. Can I listen, have the VIP treatment? Yeah, let, let, listen, your speech is it's going to be on dub. It's going um, it's going to be on dubs. It's going to have <laughs> what else do they have? It's going to be on dubs. It's going to have a gangster lane. It's going to um, yeah. You Don't forget the hydraulics. The hydraulics. That's what it is. You'll have hydraulics from there. You know. Oh, so I'm going to get a kiss. Did you just say Britt was going to go gangster? Yeah. Hey, you know, I'm gonna have a gangster lean. Yeah. So, does, does that mean uh, Adina Howard's going to sing a freak like oh, me God. on the background while I come on? You know what? I wouldn't even get to the show. I wouldn't be the star to show. I'll be laughing. Okay. You would have to take. All right. Well, I, 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 I love it. Like, I come on and talk to you. That's good. Yeah. Well, I just and wanted I, to come on and say hello to everybody. And uh, and oh. tell Brent you you look like you need a snicker bar, brother. You're about to go to sleep on us. I am. I'm about. <laughs> I need more than a snicker bar. I need like a three quarts meal because I'm kind of out of. It. Do you do you drink coffee, um, Brent? Huh? Do you drink coffee? No, I don't. And, and here's the thing. <laughs> I, I, you know what? I spend my half of my life in the army, and I don't drink coffee. Is that weird mm -hmm. or what? You don't drink <laughs> coffee. I don't want coffee. No, actually, I drink tea all the time, right? Um, and, and I spent my whole career drinking. Tea. People thought I was weird, but okay, I'm different. Here's the thing: when you don't, when you get to know me, being in the army life, here's the thing. Most people would go on deployments and have their children when they come back because they were happy to see their wives. Mm -hmm. Right? Makes sense, right? Yeah. Well, I had my kids before I went, before we deployed. I, I was mm -hmm. just ass backwards like that. Mm -hmm. um, you were just a busy bunny, weren't you? <laughs> oh, yeah, I was. <laughs> yeah, I was <laughs> You know, I'm looking at this. I'm like, if I want to have my own child, this is the perfect, all of you guys right here. Y'all are like the Brady Bunch. We look like the Brady Bunch. Right? <laughs> oh, hey. This will be the perfect. You guys will all, I would take Sun all kiss, of you guys right camping. here and take you this all is the, the right here. This is, this is the Brady Bunch, the Jeffersons, the different strokes. <laughs> We're all in one here. We're living the dream on this one. With a dash of Martin in a different world. There you go. <laughs> we, I will actually take this this group right here and say, "Come on, let's go." And I'll come back for more, of course. We go with you. I, I will say, everybody right here. I will. I will say, "Come on, I want you all to come." Hey, you, you, speaking of Brady Bunch and television shows, somebody asked me one time. They said, "You know what? You say you're attracted to black women. Your wife is black. Okay." They said, "Is there any white women you are attractive, attracted to? You know, in your youth or growing up?" And I would say, "You know what? Yes, there was. There were two. Here, here here's the two Beckys, and this is like a world premiere, guys. The road, the Captain Swirl actually had attraction to Beckys, right? Really? You, Who was you would never think that?" Either. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm I'm being serious. Mm -hmm. Number one was uh, Linda Carter back in the seventies. Oh well, so, come on, Brit. Woman, um, right? Superwoman was a Superwoman. Wonder yeah, woman. Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. Yeah. Wonder Wonder woman. Woman. Mm -hmm. You know who the other one was? Who was Blair 
from fucking oh, Saturday Night Live. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, good was taste, that's good taste. That's good taste. They were both beautiful. Yeah, no, beautiful. No, no, no. Get this. Get this. People ask me about this. They think I was like attracted to Tootie because she's black, right? Uh -huh. No. And Kim Fields was a very beautiful woman, right? Yeah. But no, Blair just, just, she had my heart, right? Yeah. So, I, I mean, maybe it's because of the image she had. She was glamorous. You know, she wasn't Becky, but she just. She just had a goal. Brit, right? Brit, she was I an put, girl. She was an don't girl. interrupt me. Hold on, guys. <laughs> okay. I, I'm just telling you the Beckys I were attracted to, right? Because it's rare. Mm -hmm. It's not it's not <laughs> common. Okay, that's Blair. Linda Carter, mm -hmm. Wonder Woman, right? Mm -hmm. She is the and I would say she's the most beautiful white woman ever to walk the earth, mm -hmm. right? Right? Uh -oh. <laughs> Here's the thing, and, and, and this woman was from Arizona, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I grew up in New Mexico and Arizona, so she's in my backyard. So that's that's awesome. Mm -hmm. That is so cool. Yeah. These You're women, really a little. <laughs> hey, these women were beautiful, right? They're awesome. But let me tell you something. And here's the thing: mm -hmm. if Donna Summer. Or Thelma from Good Times would walk in the room. I would kick them women to the curb in a New York minute because you know what? Black women have my heart, and I'm telling you, but even though I love these white women, black women, you have my heart. You got it. Hey, hey Brent, no you got you got to hear this. It's 1978. And Thelma from Good Times would. If I had if I had those women, but they came in, I would kick them to the curb in a minute. I'm just saying. Hey, hey, Britt. In 1978, yeah. I had a, a one of the record albums. You know the the re actual record, and yeah. I kept playing Donna Summer's Hot Stuff over and over oh, and over yeah. until my my oh, mom was screaming from the other end of the house. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what? Here, I thought thing. she was smoking hot. Oh, God. <laughs> when, when I was like seven and eight, I told my dad, you know what? What if I had a girlfriend that looked like Donna? So I was so in love with that woman. I was just like, my dad was like, oh, my God, he's going to marry a black woman. Oh, he, he and my mom was like, yeah. It wasn't that they were against it. They just knew. What? That's yeah, what they, my heart yeah. was. But everyone around me would say, growing, they would say, you're going to marry white guy. I said, no, I'm not going to marry. You're going to marry white I said, and mm -hmm. up until the last part, one person, last person, one of the last uh, person that I talked to, she said, you're going to marry. I said, no, I'm not. She said, yes. I said, no, I'm not. She said, yes. I said, how are you going to tell me? I know what I, she said, you're going to marry a white guy. And I was like, no, I'm not. And one day I was like, I'm going to marry a white man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so I was like, no, but I mean, I would go. I would date a white man. I was. I've always been attracted to white men. Even in sixth grade, this guy named Mark, I, I was in love with his brother. And now I look back, I said, Mark, he was in love with me, but I loved his brother. I was in love with his brother. Hey, hey guys, you, you know, you, you know what's a, what's awesome is black women. You got exotic names. I mean, Keisha. That that that's awesome. Um, my my first girlfriend was named Lachey, and I was like, "Oh my god, that you, that's you like so hybrid." <laughs> no, I mean that's not a bad thing. I'm just shocked. I'm like, really? Yeah. We, yeah. In the, in the black community, those names are are frowned upon. I'm just that's why I'm shocked. So you oh, guys really embrace those names? Son, kiss. Yeah, that, that was upon. my first girlfriend's uh, name, and, and and you know what? Yeah. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Did he just mute himself? Oh. He, he, he himself clicked off. off, I think, by I mistake. Right now. <laughs> Frank, we need you. We need you. He's, he'll be back. Hey, hey thank you. Hey, Mama Chris. Hey, baby. I'm going to my baby. Hey, you guys? Good. You guys? Huh? Hey, am I back? You're back. You're back. Uh, okay. Hey, no, but I, I want to <laughs> say this. My my first girlfriend was named Lachey, right? Mm -hmm. And, and uh, <laughs> just like, you know what was crazy? It is, you know, she was, 
her mom was a single mother, right? And, and she was just like, she was like, she like, she clinged to me, but she thought I was like cute, I guess, kind of nice. But but the the thing of it is 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 her mom ended up uh, dating a white guy. I think she ended up marrying a, a white guy because of uh, I don't know if it was my influence, but uh, I don't know. But anyway, that's just interesting. Mm -hmm. Wow, um, that's good to know. Yeah, hey, Love Quest. Welcome. <laughs> 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 oh, wow. Hi, you guys, man. Oh, my you're you're oh, 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 Hey, hey, Love Quest, good to you see you. You are large. Look at that. You, the Beautiful. melanin is just spilling out all over everywhere. Just gorgeous. <laughs> look at this pretty woman. <laughs> Thank you for no, coming up. I'm so glad you guys are coming up. I love to see black women talking. Love Quest, you are simply gore. Yes. I see why. I see why. I see why your husband was like, oh, she about to be on my arm. And, and I, 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 yes, look how pretty she is, you guys. Oh my goodness. I'm so good. Okay, I'm back, y'all. I'm so sorry. That's it. You know, okay, I'm, I'm so sorry. The she's the most so pretty. Beautiful on earth. Just saying. Love Quest is gorgeous. Listen, Love Quest, if I ever get a, cha a, a channel, I don't know if I ever do, you must come. Mm -hmm. my, listen, glass is right here. See, mm -hmm. 49, but I can't wait to turn 50. But listen, mm -hmm. this is what 49 does. Okay, that's what it does. Okay, I can see you even more. Today, these glasses are working. Tomorrow, I don't know what the other ones will do. But, oh, hi. I can't <laughs> hear you, sweetheart. I can't hear you. Can't hear you. You're on mute, honey. Oh, my goodness. Okay, sorry. <laughs> No, oh, you're good now. You don't look 49. What? Yeah, you, you know what? I don't feel it either. Up? I'm 49, yeah. and I'm so happy to be 49. Good. I can't wait to turn 50, though. You know, mm -hmm. years ago, Oprah was like, you celebrate every year. And I used to say, who wants to be? And I thought, and that, that year, this was years ago. And I said, I am. So I celebrate every year, and I'm so happy to be 49. Yeah, can't wait yes. to turn 55. Mm -hmm. But thank you so much. Gorgeous. Yes. What, look at how pretty you are. You guys are so, and look at Mama Chris. Yes. Just looking. Y'all just so oh, pretty. Yes. Chris. I'm always on here, baby. I'm sure. <laughs> you, you, honey, you, you are gorge. You are gorge. Don't, don't you, don't you water that down. Looking good. Mama's getting old here. I call the kids today. No, you're not old. You're seasoned. There's a difference. Okay. <laughs> Now, baby, you know how time flies, though. You look good. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I, you guys look so gorgeous. Oh, hey, hey ladies, let's, let me take a break. Let me take a break because you ladies are so beautiful. I, I gotta <laughs> get my breath here. Okay. <laughs> and I was well, like, Chrissy. Chrissy is so pretty. I was looking at, I looked at, I love wrong faces and Chrissy's faces and, and the way her eyes are. I was like, those are some good, we need some, those need to be modeled. Look how her eyes are so, just so oh, I love her eyes. Yeah. I think I told you this before, um, uh, Chrissy. I don't know if I did. And, and, and that's okay. We're going to see God's child one day. And I know we're going to be <laughs> bragging about the beauty too. Well, that's you like guys that. are okay. so sweet. Okay. <laughs> Chrissy, Chrissy reminds me of that. Um, there's a beautiful black actress. She reminds me. I'm looking at her picture. She reminds me of. And uh -huh. I can't think of the actress's name, but she plays in a lot of. Uh, she's petite and same cute little face like her too. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. I know that. Um, cute, same eyes that she has. The same pretty eyes. Wait, a minute, is this the one? Did she play on the um on a sitcom with Tracy Morgan? Years ago, I think, yes, I think she was on there with her, and she I, also played in a lot of other movies too. Yeah, yeah. a her. lot of yeah. black yeah. things, uh, uh, more yeah, black, black movies. Movie. Yeah, exactly. That, I mean, I forget her name, but I, I know exactly what you're talking about. She exactly does her eyes. Yeah, very beautiful. And I eyes. always said how pretty she was too, and how her eyes. Were, that's, what I, that's what I. That's what I know. Eyes. Yeah, she has them. 
Yeah, that is that, such that, a huge compliment coming from people that are so gorgeous like you guys. So I'm <laughs> flattered. Thank you. Oh my goodness, it's the truth. It is the truth. I was like, she is. Her, and I was saying her eyes are to die for. She is so pretty. Gorgeous. Yes. Gorgeous. You guys are so pretty. Yeah, I look at you all and I say, I'm so glad to be a black woman. Y'all just make me so glad to be a black woman. Oh my God. Really, it's the truth. If I ever get my show, y'all got to be a part of my clan. Y'all got to keep making me look good. Seriously. <laughs> yes. Oh my, I'm so happy. Okay, okay, Brent, we're sorry. Let's let yeah. let's start winning. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can I ask what were we talking about? We can got, I ask we got a up with GD and everything. Okay. Can I, can I ask a question? It, yes. It relates, go ahead. Go okay. Ahead. It, it relates to um, the, I, I won't say gentleman, but the individual who you had on, you featured on your show, mm -hmm. Mr. Umar. Uh, yes. So, from my experience as a Black woman, um, he's He's uh, kind of common for, for um, unfortunately, he's very common for black mm -hmm. people. And, and I, first of all, I would like to say that I adore uh, black men in, <clears throat> in the sense that they're my brothers. Mm -hmm. And, yes. uh, you know, they're created by the most high God, our mm -hmm. father. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. I really do feel for them. I do. They've, they've been through a mm -hmm. lot. Really have. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, I, I recognize and do not dismiss um, the wrongs that they have um, <clears throat> have uh, placed and uh, upon us and how they have treated uh, their women. Mm -hmm. And I, mm -hmm. I wonder if anyone, now I don't believe I carry bitterness I, I truly don't because I have black friends. Actually, one of my dearest mm -hmm. friends is a white woman, and and she's married to a black man. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I I know some very good black men. Um, yes, I do. But um, <clears throat> there is definitely, even with the good ones, for some reason, there's definitely an element of disrespect for women. And I I, I just I you know I I can't quite grasp exactly where that came from. I want to say slavery, but I know there was a time in history where our people were doing pretty good. You know, black men were in the home. There were both a mother and father. Um, you know, our communities took care of one another. If there was, you know, one woman in the community who left, everyone would take care of her. You know, mm -hmm. um, there was a time where we had community. And I'd say probably around the late 1950s, 1960s, when drugs were placed in the inner city, that sort of thing, uh, you mm -hmm. saw the black homes, you know, kind of fall apart. And, you know, I hope I'm not getting off too much, but I also believe that when abortion was legalized, there was a lot that happened in our community there as well. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't feel that I can place it all on slavery. I will say um, that element of disrespect, somehow you see it in Africa too today. You see it in the Caribbean. You see it in Brazil. You see it in Panama. You see it kind of everywhere where you will find black men. And mm -hmm. just, you know, I pray about it sometimes because it, it hurts me so deeply. On the one hand, I recognize the, <clears throat> the brokenness. I recognize the pain. I do recognize the, the jealousy that's there. Jealousy for Black women, jealousy for Black men. But I also recognize, um, you know, it's kind of something that's not just with Black men in the, in the West. So mm -hmm. how can I want to know how can we recognize that while, you know, and I don't know if we should be concerned about, you know, them feeling like we respect them or not, but how can we recognize that and still somehow respect them, but not take on that, um, you know, that, that 
uh, oppressiveness, that anger that that they somehow seem to can't can't help placing on. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I think it's important. I'm so sorry mm-hmm. to interrupt. I, I think it's important for us to, you know, how can we have that balance, so to speak, and still, you know, look and 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 expect love to come in any package possible. Yes. Can I can I answer mm-hmm. that? Because sure. I really want to. Yeah. Uh, and I, I might not have the answer, and I probably don't. Um, mm-hmm. Here's the thing: when it when it comes to true love, when it, when it's like that, and, and I I I don't know what black people go through. I don't, and I'm not going mm-hmm. to pre- even pretend that I do. Even with my black wife telling me, I don't know. But here's the thing: with me, when it comes to true love. When it comes to someone I really love, and, and, and this might seem corny, this might seem kind of weird, but I, I just embrace them. It, it's like, uh, you know, the women I dated in the past, and it was all black women except two white women, um, mm-hmm. out of obligation and guilt. But here, here's the thing. When they would get there, I would just hug them so tight and I would just say, I would just tell them I love you. I love you. I just, I don't know if it was just a desire I had to just embrace them at that time, which I did. And maybe it was something that I could feel spiritually that I just felt I had to hug them and Mm -hmm. had the desire to. Um, Sometimes things are so simple and, and, and what you're talking about, I mean, maybe it's not simple, but maybe just mm-hmm. somebody that's there to just embrace you at that time, to uh-huh. just tell you they love you, to uh-huh. just tell you that you're you're everything to them. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I I think my marriage has lasted so long because I, I've always expressed to my wife how much I love her, how much mm-hmm. she's everything to me. And, and it's not a lie. It's true. Yeah. And, and, you know, she embraces me back because of that. Maybe, you know, I think a lot of times we can cure things with true love. Mm-hmm. And we don't have to look alike or be from the same community. That we could just come together and have true love. And I've seen it. I've seen it happen through the years. And mm-hmm. with my experience with my lo- wife, uh-huh. yeah, I, I mean, I'm blessed there, but I've seen other people blessed. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe what, what you need is a guy that not so much understands what you're going through, but embraces what you're going through. Does that make sense? He don't know what it is. He don't understand it, but he just loves you and just wants to, you know, he just wants to cling to you, wants to hug you, wants to give you, show you love in that sort of way. Does it make sense? I don't know. I'm just, yeah. I don't know ahead. if anyone else wants to chime in, but, but let me just say this this little bit right here. Um, I, you can love a person. Yeah. They're just, you, can, you can love a person, mm-hmm. but you have to. First off, I, like I said before, when it comes to when we talk about that, like I love the fact you say you want to call him a gentleman, the the, the guy, the uh, Umar. Um, again, like you said, when I said earlier, even with the doctor from the heart from Harvard, he says, uh-huh. when I was saying, it's not we have to take men out of the equation, equation, and it's about looking at yourself in the mirror and saying, do I how do I want to ch- how. Is it time for me to choose me? Just take because women a lot of times we get so caught up into what we want a man, a man, a man, a man, a man. There comes a time we have to just say, you know what? Let me just take men out of it and just. Right. Is it time for me to choose me? Now, part mm-hmm. of that could be, okay, this is what I choose, and if you choose someone outside of the black race, if mm-hmm. you do, mm-hmm. you could still love a black man and respect him. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can love and respect uh, any a woman of any race, a man of any race, but we're talking about mm -hmm. black men. But that doesn't mean you have to say, I'm okay with what you do right. and what you say in your delivery. I'm, I will never mm -hmm. be okay with that because mm -hmm. that doesn't line up with what I think and feel of me because not, I've chosen myself first before yeah. I, mm -hmm. I chose anybody's son. So what the rhetoric that you're speaking and spe spewing doesn't line up, you're not talking to me. So I'm out of, you're not a part of this equation when it comes to my life. Mm -hmm. However, I can love you from a distance, mm -hmm. but I'm gonna put you in this room. You, we have to learn how to compartmentalize like men. They know how to do that in their brain. Mm -hmm. We know how to multitask, but they do that too when it comes to life in their their minds, their brains. Mm -hmm. Oh, I wish we could do that. However, mm -hmm. they they have, but we can start doing that too. Mm -hmm. So what we do in life when it comes to people that what treats us wrong, say you don't have to hate them. Right. Because that's mm -hmm. a part of pursuing peace for you. That's mm -hmm. what I'm in therapy. That's what I'm right now. That's what I'm doing right now. Part of my mm -hmm. therapy is mm -hmm. choosing peace. But again, it doesn't come by default. You have mm -hmm. to you have to nurture it. So what does that look like? This right here, what we're talking about right now. Uh -huh. You can say, I don't have to hate you, and because I don't want to be that bitter black woman, as we talked about before. And mm -hmm. I I can say that to Brent. I don't want to hate black men. No. It has nothing to do with oh, because he's my brother. No. Because everybody know at the end of the day, we all brothers and sisters. Right. It's mm -hmm. not about being race loyal and all. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That whole black woman sisterhood, that's laughable. Mm -hmm. Because here's the thing relatives are by default. Family, you choose them, and they don't always look like you. Mm -hmm. The ones that rocked out with me mm -hmm. don't look like me at mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. And that's my, those are my family. Yes. So mm -hmm. my thing is this, when it comes to black men, you ask, how can we love them? What, how can we respect them? Even though X, Y, Z, you can say, okay, I'll respect you because you of the human race. So mm -hmm. that's what mm -hmm. I do. Because mm -hmm. one, that is what our God wanted. That's what my God want me to expect from me. I'll do that. Mm -hmm. Do not what you're spewing. Because mm -mm, he, he doesn't want that for me. No. He don't want it for you. For, for, for you. He definitely mm -hmm. wanted for me. Because what the scripture said and what I'm supposed to expect of myself and how my man, husband is supposed to treat me. <laughs> nope. Nope. Mm -hmm. And another one. But right. what I do is take you and I'll put you in this room. You want title mm -hmm. today. But I'll put you in this room. Mm -hmm. You stay there. And I, again, my Angelou says something. And so many people take this little tidbit out. She said, people, and she says, when a person shows you who you are, and a lot of people say, "What well, my Andrew said, when a person shows you who who they are, you believe them." But they forget to say, when a person shows you who you who they are the first time, they forget mm -hmm. that time. you believe them. Oh, now, yeah. can a person change? Mm -hmm. Yes, they can, but for how long? Is it consistent? Mm -hmm. so that's when you believe a person. So the thing is, once they own their way out of that room, then you put them in another room. But until then, that's where they stay. And you treat them mm -hmm. that way. Doesn't mean you have to be disagreeable with them and argue and fight because that takes away from your peace. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what you do is, yeah. as a black man, if that's you deal with each person accordingly. Mm -hmm. And if that person, that black man, is giving you a hard time, you put him in his room. You that's how you mm -hmm. think too. Okay, babe, come here, come follow me. Mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. Okay, that's how you do it. Mm -hmm. And, and the mm -hmm. next man that come, like this doctor from Harvard, he's in another room. Your mm -hmm. room is right here next to me, doctor from Harvard. Mm -hmm. that's, Absolutely. Yeah, that's how you keep your peace. That's how you choose you first. That's, mm -hmm. how, that's, that's how you nurture peace. That, that's how you deal with a man, woman, child, everything. That's how, mm -hmm. Even an aunt, that's how you, that is, at least that's how Sun Kiss is doing it. Amen. And to piggyback <laughs> off of what Sunkiss said, like at a point, no matter what we've been through in life, no matter um, yeah. what predisposi uh, predispositions have come before, mm -hmm. like we all have things that have hurt us. And mm -hmm. I think that we're all a little broken. Don't get me yeah. wrong. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. But the way we channel those things and the decisions that we make going forward, mm -hmm. where we can't blame our parents for what they didn't do, our family, the society, the white yeah. man, the black man, the yellow man, whatever, like yeah. they have to take accountability 
Yeah. And you can still love them, but don't let their garbage or their baggage rub off on you because it can harden mm-hmm. your heart and change your character. So whoever those mm-hmm. people are, as you said, we got to start learning to compartmentalize because yeah, other it. people do it. Yeah, so God. if we're able to do that, then we can still love them, but we have to choose us first and say, like, you know what? If I wouldn't put up with it from this toxic person or I wouldn't accept this or that, Mm -hmm. how much more than should I love myself Mm -hmm. to not deal with what you're claiming that you're offering? Because everybody um, isn't always insightful or aware. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, Mm -hmm. what's that? Is that your your husband? (laughs) <laughs> no, actually, he's the friend. My husband's over here. <laughs> oh, oh hi. hi. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah. we, we, have some company, we have some company staying overnight. Oh, yeah. I'll fix my wig. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'll fix my wig. Well, no, it's not a wig. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Chris, I just have to say it's a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> it's not. It's not. <laughs> but it, it, tell tell them uh, hi. Tell them hi. Um, them okay. You know, I Chrissy, lost my. I lost, Chrissy was I right. lost my hearing here. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, Miss. I'm glad to meet you, all of my pretty girls sitting up here tonight. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mr. 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 Corey, did he leave? Huh? Uh, I, I did Mr. Corey he left? Right. Huh? He must have passed out because all the beautiful okay. ladies, you know what? I wouldn't have left. We got supermodels. <laughs> all my pretty girls sitting up here tonight. I think it's just beautiful. Mm-hmm. Make yeah. mama feel good too. Mm-hmm. Got Mr. Brent telling you. Mm-hmm. I, I tell you, you ladies are beautiful. You really are. I, yeah. Where I love what Chrissy was saying. That is so right. Chrissy, you yeah. hit it dead on. And, and I like what you said, Chrissy. You said, thank you, Brent and, and Mama Chris. You, the, Chrissy just said something that's huge. She said, when it hit, comes a time in life where we can't allow what uh, the, our, the ones that came before us mm-hmm. to excuse that behavior. We have to say, mm-hmm. okay, it's up to me now. I like mm-hmm. that. And you know what else? Um, Brent said something earlier. About what uh, about Jim Crow and all them, the ones that, that things that happened years ago and all that. Uh-huh. And so a lot of times that puts me in mind like white, a lot of white men figure when it, they, it kind of keeps them away from us because they have that white guilt. And it's like, no, oh, yeah. you mm-hmm. didn't do that. You didn't have right. faith. You didn't have yeah. nothing to do with Jim Crow coming yeah. up with those decrees. Yeah. Right. Not about hey. to meet Jim Crow. I just need two <laughs> men to come in the back. Hey. But that's a different story. Mm-hmm. But you yeah, know what I'm saying? Like, that's not why like, we, we shouldn't have that race loyalty because of what was passed down, yeah. you know? Right. Yes, mm-hmm. and on top of that, I feel like if you feel like those people were oppressing us or you have such like a strong hatred or passion about it that you're against it, then you should not put into your community the same thing. You should not treat people like that in general. You should have a way bigger outset like as far as your mind when it comes to you like just basically like I said having accountability saying you know what if Mm -hmm. I was a drug dealer and I'm reformed like I'm not going to go back into my same communities if I'm now anti-drugs and start handing out crack to people like I'm not going to do that because I need to be the change that I want to see so many times like they like to talk the talk but they don't want to walk the walk and it's like you have to be a person that takes initiative not just preaching about it and pro-black this and this and this and that whatever you believe in you need to stand ten toes down on that and you need to be that one drop, even if it's a drop in a bucket, that's mm-hmm. actually initiating that change that you're talking about, even if it's internal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Let me address this, this white guilt thing. Okay. okay. Yeah. And, and let me tell you, it's a real thing because us as white people and, and when, when we study history, um, 
you know, most of us, believe it or not, are, aren't racist. We don't want to hurt nobody that's different from us. We really don't. And, and, and here's the thing. When white guilt comes in, it's a real thing. And people use it against mm -hmm. us because it's power. Here's the thing. We'll, we'll study history, and I've done it too. And I see the most disgusting things that's happened in our country. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and when you dig deep, you just find so much evil. And it gets even more evil. And you're like, oh, my God. Did we do this as a country? Did, did we do this as a people? Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. you find out it, it, it's so true. And, and you feel guilt about it. It's like, oh, my God, this is awful. That's what we feel. But you know you didn't do it, right? Right. But mm -hmm. people throw that at you, and the white guilt comes in because you say, okay, the past was awful. Mm -hmm. But... And, you know, when people, when you will have a, a discussion, the biggest way that the slack down white people is talk about slavery and uh, racism. You do that, um, we're done. Um, I'm not going to even argue with you. Even though we know you're wrong, even though we know what you're saying is garbage, we just thought. You know what? We do that? Because Come in right back, baby. I gotta go check on the dogs. Okay. <laughs> okay. You know why we do that? Because we have white guilt. Mm. Even though we didn't do it, we mm. got that guilt. And and you know what? We don't want to be seen as racist. Mm -hmm. So we, we can see. We just let it go. That's um, the big one that's pulled out. That's the big gun. Yeah. That's and, the meaning to that. For mm -hmm. me. For me, I got beyond that point. I'm the, I, I just had the point, you know what? Yeah, there was evil stuff that happened. Yeah, white people done awful, god awful things. I don't dispute that. But you know what? I'm my own person. Yeah. I I I'm responsible for my sins, not not for I'm thinking about that. I'm gonna lie. in a different space and time. Right. You know, so I, I can transfer from that and I can argue with people about slavery, Jim Crow, and all this other stuff. And I, I'm okay because you know what? I wasn't there. I didn't cause this. This ain't me. Mm -hmm. um, so I can tra I, I can have that discussion, but a mm -hmm. lot of white people cannot mm -hmm. because they got that white guilt. They're, they're ashamed. And, 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 and honestly... Black people, listen to me. We are so ashamed about the past that we had nothing to do with. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times you can manipulate us. A lot of times you can end a argument or discussion just on that point. Even though mm -hmm. we know you're full of crap. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying <laughs> black people are full of crap, but even no, when we know you're full of crap. Yeah. It ends it because of that white guilt. I agree. Yeah. I totally agree. I, agree. I think that's a form of manipulation, though. Yeah. Like, because yeah, there shouldn't even be a thing like that. Because regardless of what your race is, regardless of what we went yeah. through, and it's not to minimize what we went through. We're not saying that it wasn't traumatizing or it doesn't affect people. Yeah. But let's be perfectly honest. There have been wars, um, people being enslaved for centuries for thousands right. and thousands of years so it wasn't just black people that went through slavery we've had that documented in the bible where many different towns many different countries have gone through that same thing mm -hmm. the jews went through mm -hmm. the same thing even in modern times so it's like if they can take whatever they went through and their ancestors went through and make something out of it and they don't use that as a scapegoat, mm -hmm. then we should be able to do the same thing and kind of move past it. And I'm not saying racism isn't prevalent today or people don't have prejudices right. because that's the world that we live in, being realistic. Exactly. But that doesn't change the fact that that's just an easy convenience to not do what you are supposed to do or to not do the work on yourself to improve. Right. Sorry. I'm sorry. Let me say this real quick and I'll, I'll get off. But 
what you said is true. And, and here's the thing: the white guilt comes in, and it, it it it's like it's like whatever the discussion is, we just concede it. We just let it go mm-hmm. because you know we feel we're wrong, and even though it don't have nothing to do with us, it, mm-hmm. it's a real thing. And yeah. uh, but. You know, people that have real general love and love people around them, it, it affects us the most. Because mm-hmm. a racist don't care about that. The right. One, the the right. people that you see back down, they really care. They really, yeah. it, it, it hurts their heart. Because mm-hmm. yeah. a, a true racist don't mm-hmm. give a crap. Right. He'll, he'll, right. He'll, yeah. he'll, he'll stop you in the ground and don't even care what you think. <laughs> mm-hmm. no, I'm just saying. But anyway, go ahead, ladies. You know, gonna keep so, it yeah, That's right. I, was, I was agreeing, uh, just piggybacking off of what everybody's saying, and everybody is so on so on point mm-hmm. uh, with it. Um, you know, obviously, ancestry. You know, I have ancestry, of course, African American, and we have uh, Native American Cherokee on both my sides of the family. So, um, it is it. It, it is history, and it is something that. Oh, you got um, Cherokee. You know what? I I found that in my uh, ancestry. We got some Cherokee too. I can oh, see. I can I'm see. It. Saying, we got yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. I can so. I think y'all maybe some kid. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. See, you're his twin, yeah. and then I'm I may be the cousin. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I'm, I'm the th- the third cousin. <laughs> yeah. I guess. Um, go. Yeah. So I agree. I mean, with with everything. I mean, coming from uh, the history that both African Americans and Native Americans mm-hmm. um, have went through, I do feel that it is not you don't go around and you point fingers at people that are standing here today and say it's your fault for what happened hundreds of years ago i do however if we do not learn from our past we are doomed to repeat it so okay. i do believe that should be You're right you know, yes you have it in the history lessons let's yeah. talk about it it seems to mm-hmm. me you know, sometimes we'll layer things over because we don't want to get into those discussions but sometimes mm-hmm. it's healthy because it's like a wound that we kind of just slapped quick band-aids on and said, okay, yeah. it's fixed. And it was never really, I felt <laughs> fixed. And let us not keep it, let us not forget, obviously, when we're, I wasn't around when civil rights was going on. Mm-hmm. But, you know, that wasn't mm-hmm. long, long ago. So, like, um, to piggyback on Chrissy, yes, is is there still unease, uh, in a sense, with maybe some people being prejudiced? And yep, I see yep. prejudice on both sides because right. you have a prejudiced mm-hmm. black person, prejudiced uh, Native American, a prejudiced yep. Chinese person. Prejudice. You better preach. You know what I'm saying is in all preach. colors. So mm-hmm. my question though is is uh, you know really like Sunkiss and both Chrissy were saying is deal with people as individuals, you know, as they come towards you. Don't just blame the whole collective. And that piggybacks mm-hmm. on black men. Um, when I think about black men, I'm I'm engaged to a white man right now. But yeah. uh, even when mm-hmm. I'm, I'm with them, I'm very cognizant of my brothers. I'm very mm-hmm. cognizant of my sisters and the role I play mm-hmm. as a presenting African American woman with some Native mm-hmm. American ancestry. But if you look at me and say, "Oh, she's black," so I right. present yeah. that, and so I'm very cognitive of my role. Mm-hmm. Um, as I face society, and I don't give people a pass because they are, you know, <laughs> black or Native American or whatever. You know, right, right. you have to, mm-hmm. you know, hey, respect is given. You earn the respect, no matter what color you are. Mm-hmm. And, and there we go. My brother, mm-hmm. my my blood brother, is, uh, you know, he's my brother, mm-hmm. and he stands for me as what I hold in esteem as what I say a black man should be. You know, he is a man who married, he had a wife, he was a provider, worked two full-time jobs even to put food on the table so she would not have to work, she could stay at home. So to me, when I think of black men and because I have a black brother who to me is an exemplary man in Mm -hmm. general, 
I think mm -hmm. of him, you know, and I say, okay, well, if there's my brother, surely there is another black man who exactly what my yeah, brother yeah. does. So That's the Russell Wilson. We got yeah. a Russell Wilson in the house. There we go. There we go. So mm -hmm. I take it. Take, uh, you know, like what you were saying, Sunkiss, you know, in general, deal with them uh, as they how they deal with you. OK, mm -hmm. so if you're going to give you're going to give me the saltiness, I'm going to give you saltiness back. If you're going to give me the sweet, I'm gonna give you the sweet back. Right. If you're going to give me the sour, I'm going to give you the sour back. So, um, you know, deal with these men in general, whether they're black, white, whatever color, right. um, how they treat you. And if you find the one that treats you accordingly, in other words, the one that treats you the way you want to be treated, not the way he thinks you should be treated or he treats you that way, the way you, and that goes back to what Sunkiss was saying and, and Chrissy, no, to thine own self be true. Learn to know and, and love who you are, my sister. And at that point, it'll all become clear to you. Because when you hold yourself in high esteem, then that man coming towards you is going to pick up on that energy. He's yeah. going to pick up on that energy. You pamper yourself. When I was dating, mm -hmm. I told every man I dated, Fridays are my day. Well, what's mm -hmm. your day? That's my day where I pamper mm -hmm. myself. Oh, That's oh. my spa day. That's where I spend time mm -hmm. with myself, loving on myself. Mm -hmm. So that day, I will not do dates that day. You can mm -hmm. have the end of the day of that week. We can set up a date. But Friday, well, I'm about to start slow dancing to this song. <laughs> song. Oh, oh, so oh they okay. that, they're like, are you wow. listening to my song? She's doing that. She's huh. doing the spa day. She's doing her nails. She's getting her hair. She's doing this. Okay, well, I already mm -hmm. know when I get with her. I need to keep that going. I need to keep that routine and that maintenance going. I need to be able to provide that for. And I even had men say, you know what? If you're doing spa day on Friday, can I pay for your spa day so that I can spend a little time with you, you know, when you're done? You know, how can I, how can I get in that Friday? Because I really want to see you. So, um, you know, so it's just really uh, you. It's about you. She's so right. Um, my journey to dating um, has always been about me. Anything you undertake in your life, we are all on different journeys. And I tell, I would tell the men that I was dating, if you are the right one for me, we'll be on our separate little journeys. But if I can work during the hard times as we're going through hard times and the ups and downs and good times, as long as we're walking side by side. See, he's got his journey, but I also have mine. But we are side to side walking like this throughout my life. So That's crazy. When people get it twisted. It's like, you got to be on my journey. And you got to take my journey. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're separate people. Don't <laughs> so worry about it. Your journey, they're on their, on, on their journey. The difference is, mm -hmm. are you going like this where you can look over and say, oh, I need a little hugging today. I had a bad day. My journey oh. wasn't going so good right now. Or, yay, oh. I got that promotion. My, but, you know, and he's there. He's right alongside mm -hmm. you. But you uh -huh. both have your own road. You both have your own self-discovery <laughs> yeah. to find out. And I believe we are all here mm -hmm. really for one reason. God has put within us, and I don't get too religious, um, it within each okay. of us. You several spill it. gifts. Yeah. And some people mm -hmm. may spend their whole lives trying to find their divine purpose and they will die and never will know it. Your job here on this earth is to figure out what your divine purpose will be. You are I'm just sitting here. I just spit up on my baby tongue. That's how good they were, what you just said. <laughs> I just spit up on my baby tongue. No, I, I mean, just, everybody. I'm just, the collective you, is. No, I did, no, uh, I, I, y'all, you and Christy, oh. Josh, and y'all, I mean, Mama Chris be spitting facts too. I'm just like, yeah. I, I'm like, okay. That and these on. girls are on the right path too because you know what uh babies that's the way I always looked at life you know yeah because this even in my time and you know there's always been a, I call some men a wanderer they go from town to town and yeah. then you have some men they dress sharp but only for themselves and they're just good time in Charlie's which I always call a bachelor you know yes. so 
he's not gonna come in and want what we want. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, but one thing about it in life, I've always known that you don't love yourself. Ain't nobody gonna love you like you love you. Yeah. That part. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hello. Thank Hello, I talk women. And I've always said, one well, no use for me getting upset and throwing my hands up and paying a psychiatrist to tell me something that I already know. You know, and some of us mm -hmm. don't. I, I needed that because when you live with a narcissist, I had narcissistic relatives. My yeah. egg donor, phone donor, and then they, 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 dumb. That the little, yeah. So mm -hmm. coming from that, I had to. I never let a man mistreat me. That mm -hmm. just didn't, wasn't going to happen. That's but a beautiful you, part. Mm -hmm. I, my part is loving too much, loving people around me too much, too too too, too mm -hmm. oh, 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 much, okay. and I didn't, mm -hmm. I, I don't know how to turn it off. So I'm, I'm, that's why I always say balance. I'm big on balance. Yeah, and mm -hmm. that's why balance is so important to me. But I had to learn how to. I, I was big on the people that I love, whether I thought they were friends, relatives, and all that. I when I you get people that you give them. <laughs> It's like I was giving these people um, a, a million dollars and they were upset because I didn't give them two. Oh, yeah. Or, yeah. It's like yeah. I was mm -hmm. like saying, okay, I, I'll give you two million, but I'm, I, I, let me just, let me add myself in there too, along with the two million. And they got upset about it and did yeah. a smear mm -hmm. campaign, try to discard and do all that, you know. So I knew I had to choose myself. I had to figure out how to choose myself. And that is why. That is mm -hmm. so important. I always knew that was important, but I didn't implement that. I helped mm -hmm. other people do that for themselves. Mm -hmm. But I didn't do that for me. So I just mm -hmm. took that information and all of that energy and turned it and, and gave it to me. And of course, they're no longer, they're not around, you know. Yes. Which is great. I'm not yes. complaining. Yes. So, mm -hmm. Let me put the notes on. Yes. This is not complaining, you know. <laughs> however, however, that's huge. And that's mm -hmm. when I, and I'm so glad that when I hear of the women, especially because in the black community, to put yourself last or not at all, that's mm -hmm. celebrated. And mm -hmm. so when yes. I hear you all say this, it's like, oh my goodness, yes. I'm, yes. Not only that, am I happy to hear you all say, say that you do this, you have your day. Because, honey, I have my day too. I have yes. plenty of them. Mm -hmm. I have plenty of them. <laughs> but, yes. but the thing is, when even, I want to not do this dance just because everybody it's, it's trending. No, I, I saw this even when I was in the midst of that narcissism. But I now I am so this. If I'm telling you, if I don't have my time now, it's like my oxygen is cut off. Oh, no. So that is why mm -hmm. now it's like this is a need, and I don't want. That's why I say whatever you do when you are single, you're going to take that into your marriage, mm -hmm. and then it's going to decline. Yeah. It's going to decline, mm -hmm. and so it, I mean, if if it's not important to you, it's going to decline. Yes, yeah. you're just faking it because a lot of people look at it, fake it till you make, or just pretend to be this yeah. until you you know make them like think you're this until you get them. No, mm -hmm. no, that is going to be your lifestyle. It has yeah. to be. Yeah. Has to it be has to be a necessity. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So it's a necessity. We it's as a necessity. we as women of color have some of the highest numbers when it comes to cardiovascular cardiovascular attacks when it comes to mental illnesses and all of it stems from stress all of it stems from us putting everyone else that we value or induct as family into our lives putting them first and neglecting mm -hmm. ourselves and this is something a lot of times we were taught to be strong so that yeah. feminine side of us was mm -hmm. not celebrated. It was not um, promoted for us to do this. These things we're that you guys are talking about were luxuries. Mm -hmm. we're, we're considered gold diggers in our community. If right. We're, and, you, and the sad part is you even hear that from other women of color in those communities that have that same type of marginalized uh, mentality as the black men that carry it or the men that think that way. And mm -hmm. they will like all like get their pitchforks and be ready to tear you down if you say, hey, mm -hmm. sis. You know what? I was once like that or I once thought like this. You know what? You should love yourself more. Let's improve. You know, you're going through this and this and that as far as mental health breakdowns or this and this and that because you're not putting yourself first. Maybe you need to reevaluate the people that you have around you. They may not be the best for you even though you love them because a lot of times we love people 
who mm-hmm. we I'm not gonna say we shouldn't love them because we should, but they don't love us how we love them. And mm-hmm. it's like mm-hmm. you wouldn't mm-hmm. keep putting your money in a bank that every time you made a deposit when you go back to get some money back there was no reciprocity and you have a negative account like you would stop doing business with them so on the same way we should evaluate our relationships around us because even family sometimes isn't family and i had to learn that the hard way tell me get rid of anything that is toxic in your life and it could be a person Yes, That's toxic. Yes. And if you find it a toxic, I'm quick to tell people, family, friends, what have you, you gotta let it go. And you can you can love from a distance. You can handle That's them right. with a little spoon, like you said earlier. Like this, we can love them from a distance, right? We don't have to, but you yeah. cannot have that toxicity. And like you said, Chrissy, yep. it will make you a person physically ill. Ill. Yes. That yes. You know what, you lady. Listen, the goal to love quest, you and I can't listen, y'all. I'm t- I wish I could hug y'all from here. I'm getting chill bumps. Y'all are so right. In mm-hmm. less than a month of walking away from my narcissistic egg donor, off of nine medicines in less than a month. Amen. Amen. Off of nine medicines. That's you know, what I had a way from my family, Great my toxic family for over 25 years that's how important my my health my personal self-preservation is to me and uh i i've been divorced Mm -hmm. i Uh you know go figure i i i have have had a narcissistic narcissistic father and Mm -hmm. uh ended up marrying a narcissistic man Mm -hmm. um after a year and a half uh or excuse me year and what three months of that i i was able to get out thank you lord uh, I was blessed with a beautiful daughter, oh. and uh, mm-hmm. you know, been 16 years learning of who I am in the Lord. Wow, these 16 mm-hmm. years. Wow, and and that's how precious the Lord has taught me that I am mm-hmm. is to be alone for 16 years. Yes. And to, to work on myself, to go through yeah. therapy. I know yes. in, in the black community, therapy is kind of not really, you know, but it's you not know, embraced. therapy is a blessing. It is yeah. a true it, blessing. It is for me, yeah. Yeah, it's absolutely. A tool. It's a tool for what you already know. You just have yeah. to be, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. And my, my, you know, I, the other day I went and bought myself a, a ring. That's the kind of ring I always wanted as a little girl. And I can't tell you what kind of healing that did to me. I, I can't. It was something that I did for myself. It was the kind of ring that I always wanted. You know, those pretty, you know, gemstone rings. Yeah. And somehow the Lord was able to use even something that simple to reach so deep within me and to do some healing work. And, you know, I, I think that uh oh you're gonna make me cry uh, okay hold, i'm so sorry wait a minute just just one second i don't want to make this about me so just give me a second okay go on go on yeah, that's um you know um and just singing to the lord remembering where i walked as a girl where i walked as a, a hurting child i, I spent years in foster care because mm-hmm. of the music and things like that and and being able to go back to those places and and sing to the lord in a, in absolute abandonment and uh being able to recognize that he is my true father yes. and that my beauty my value um my preciousness resides in him and being able to live in that rest yes. in that mm-hmm. I yes. found that has been so healing and that has made the bed of my heart fertile, if you will, to be able to receive God's yes. love. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Um, so I, I find I'm at the place where I, you know, I'm I'm kind of a like a fish out of water. You know, I've been speaking with my counselor and she she feels that I'm I'm ready if I'd like to start, you know, dating or the open recording or something like that and you know it's just one of those things where you kind of you know it's exciting um you know there have been 
<laughs> you know, obviously we have to watch out for those those uh, frogs that try to weasel their snaky butt, you know, in. But um, you know, this it's 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 exciting and it's so so wonderful to get this advice from you all. It really is. Well, because, I oh, you are, but you, you know, have I, given I, some gems. I don't mm. mind. I'm actually and you are not alone. I yeah, actually, you are not alone. Yeah, but I mean, we've all been there, and we've all we all may end up having to go there again. Hey, you yeah. never know what happens. Um, but I I would say she did the best thing. Um, I actually am a um, life coach, and so oh, I do help. People I with believe you. I believe you. Like that, and so one of the things I'm so glad she told you point blank was making sure that you yourself were healed. And that's what I tell uh, the women that I work with, because if you haven't done the inner work, um, if you still have some healing that needs to be done, or as I think it was Chrissy was talking about the baggage and Sunk is talking about the baggage that we carry, uh, sometimes we will carry that, all that luggage into the next relationship. And as I tell women, especially women, if mm -hmm. you don't know who you are, if you are not centered as a person and have done some healing yourself, mm -hmm. these men will tell you who you are. Yeah. So you mm -hmm. have to know who you are when you go out there to date because they're going to tear you apart and tell you who you are. Mm -hmm. You don't need anybody telling you who you are or who they think you are. Uh -huh. you, you already know who you are. So mm -hmm. I'm glad that you did the inner work. Uh, mm -hmm. Because a lot of times women will come out, okay, I need a man, give me a man, can you help me find a man, can you help me get a man? And yeah. the first thing I want to go through is be sure that you're healed. Yeah. Now, are we ever 100% completely healed? Healing right. is an ongoing it's situation. A, yeah. Yes, yes. Thank you. I was gonna, will yeah. always be throwing out new stuff. So I was healed yeah. from maybe losing a child. But yeah. then 10 years later, I had to get healed again from something else that happened tragic in my life or something yeah. or some other trauma yeah. that I had yeah. to go through. So healing yeah. is ongoing, but you want yeah. to be as healed as you possibly can yeah. before you start going out here and interacting with these men. Yeah. And, you know, I'm just going to keep it all the way real. We talked about narcissists. Uh -huh. uh, we talked about players, men who want to run games. Mm -hmm. And again, you yourself are coming in strong. And I tell women, have your core values. These are the things that I call them non-negotiables. These are my non-negotiables. Um, I'm looking for a man who doesn't smoke. I'm looking for a man. I'm just giving you examples. Yeah, who yeah. In God, who's a God-fearing uh -huh. man, not only believes in God, but I want a God-fearing man. I need a man who will pray with me. I need a man who's a provider. Whatever your non-negotiables are, as you are out here in this world, dating mm -hmm. these men, have that list in your mind. Write it down. Because if you were dating and you said my non-negotiable was not to smoke and you start talking to them and you're like, oh, you know, so do you smoke or whatever? Yeah, you know, I smoke about, you know, a pack a day. Mm. All right. Then. We already yeah. know we're going to go politely through the date, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to get to the date. He's going to walk into the car, try to lean yeah. in for the kiss. and. Eh. You know, you, yeah. but it was great. It was great meeting you. And um, all right, you get in your car. So now when he calls or whatever, I always say it on the phone. You know what? It was a great date. But, mm -hmm. you know, I really didn't feel that connection. But I wish you luck on finding your connection. I wish you mm -hmm. luck in your endeavors. Absolutely. And you move mm -hmm. on because that was your non-negotiable. Yeah. Us women, mm -hmm. especially, we, that's why if you do not know who you are, if you don't know what you like, what you don't like, and mm -hmm. this is the thing, as you're dating, you're going to find out some new stuff about you. You're going to be like, wow, I went on the date with this guy. I always mm -hmm. thought I'd be afraid of heights, but he took me up in a hot air balloon. I kind of like that. You yeah. know, I think I'm going to add yeah. that. Give me an adventuresome, adventuresome man who's not afraid of heights, who can go up there. With you. I want to do this stuff again. Yeah. So as you're dating, you're going to maybe add to your list of negotiables or not yeah. Mm -hmm. You find out different things they're doing with you and stuff. You're like, oh, he had a sense of humor. I need a man with a sense of humor. Let me yeah. add my non negotiables. I like yeah. that. You know, yeah. so you're adding and changing. It is an organic list. My non negotiable I had because I'm five nine. So I was like, look, if I put on heels, I'm about six feet. Okay, so I need my man to be at least six feet. I had but when yeah. I found my birthday, I'm five nine, 
and he is my king. But when I went on my list and added them up, his, uh-huh. his qualities outweighed that. I think. Okay. okay. So you were able to. Okay, you were able to sacrifice that. Exactly. Yeah. So I have women actually come up with a list of mm-hmm. qualities. And what you do is you mm-hmm. add up those qualities. And if the if, if this side equals more than that side, okay, that's that's a good catch. But if he has too many mm-hmm. negative qualities that outweigh the positives, uh-huh. you know, so you yeah. have lists that you work with. We have to be, men are very strategic. Okay. They think here, and we've been going along with our two hearts, right. and getting them broken. You better yeah. be strategic when you're out there. Have your mm-hmm. list, know what you want. And they should know what we want. You should know. A man may say, what are you looking for? No, Just, I, never this is what I always say this, love question. Tell okay. me if I'm right or wrong. If I'm wrong, let me know. Give me some okay. tips. Okay. Uh-huh. And I, the guy says, well, what are you looking for? I'll say, just continue. You, I'll, I'll, you'll know. <laughs> You're so right, Sunkiss, because again, if he's a narcissist or if he's a player, he's mm-hmm. going to try to become the list. So mm-hmm. we never reveal our list. We never let them know that this is what we're looking for. So you can do it that way or you can say, you know what, I really am not sure. I guess, mm-hmm. I'll, you know, I'll, we'll just see. Maybe I'll find out, you know. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like that. I like you know? that. So I like that because you know men are men are big, like you said they're strategic. They're That's a part of their strategy. Uh-huh. That's mm-hmm. one thing they always ask. Well, what are you looking for? And even if they mean well, they'll oh, they'll yeah. ask. That. Yeah, they will not. Yeah, yeah. but get especially to- the narcissists. You know, to me that's a turn off when a man okay, does so, that. Uh-huh. That's a turn off to me when he does right, that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. To so me, he's automatically out. He don't have to try to figure out nothing. Yeah, yeah. Because I always say a woman is quick like a cat, so she always keep her man guessing. Yeah. I think a woman should always be yeah. mysterious in her own way, in a certain mm-hmm. way. A man mm-hmm. should always be pursuing you. Twenty-five years into the marriage, yes. he should always be pursuing you, not in a, as heavy mm-hmm. like in the beginning. But yeah. you know, mm-hmm. women, we tend to talk too much and share too much. That's what your girlfriends mm-hmm. are for. And you know, right. yeah. say, you, need, you know that you're not, you're not. That's not your girlfriend. He you're needs to always keep the mystery. Yeah. You're letting him talk. So when you're on the date and you're eating and things of that nature, because I used to be very talkative. Me. I had to like that. Yeah. So I would put a piece of food in my mouth because I'm not going to talk with food in my mouth. So I'd be. <laughs> so I love shut it. up so that man it. could talk because if you let him talk, he's going to tell you everything. You just mm-hmm. let him do all the talking. You're going to find out if he had an ex wife, if they close or not. You're going to find out if he had bankruptcy. You're going to find out how many kids. Let him talk. Mm-hmm. And that, and the one in sales is the one who speaks first loses in sales. Mm-hmm. Always been oh, taught okay. that. So don't you be. And you right sad. too, baby. Mm-hmm. Yes, that. Right. Note of what he's saying, but mm-hmm. I'm gonna be honest with you. Before you ever, 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 ever meet a man, okay, ever meet a man in, in person, mm-hmm. you should have yeah. on the dating sites, uh, the apps and stuff, which I that's how I found my fiance. Believe it or not, oh, okay. uh-huh. um, if you're on the dating apps, you should have exchanged many messages for at least a few weeks before you ever even give this person your phone number. And when yeah. you are doing the message, you're asking uh, questions on your list. Okay? Uh, well, I'm mm-hmm. So it's like, you know, oh, okay, so tell me a little bit more about yourself. You know, and, okay. and I literally had notebooks <laughs> while he's talking, on the, um, while he's texting or emailing. I'm taking notes on everything that he says. Oh. And then if I decide from those many messages is maybe a week or two. And, uh, you know, uh, because one, if I don't know if you're dating with the intent to get married. But I, I, that's the only way I'm dating. I don't get no other reason. Uh-uh. I didn't have time for nothing else. It's I don't like, have time for you know, I let them know. So I would say, well, why? You know, what are you hoping to get out of Bumble, or what are you hoping to get out of Match.com or Christian.com? Okay, mm-hmm. so that's the first question I ask, and then I sit back and let them answer. Well, you know, I just got out of divorce, so I'm not trying to do anything serious right now. So, no, that's not the one for you. And another thing, never. Never really try to date someone who is fresh out of a uh, marriage. Yeah, I'm uh, there. Uh-huh. Out of a deep relation. Well, how long were you with the girl? Well, I was with her for five years. We were going to get married. Uh, when did you break hey, up? We broke up. Hey, a month ago. Hey, ladies, mm-hmm. you think 
Mr. Bruce, it's about time for you to have to go to bed, isn't it? Oh, we're, we're so yeah. sorry. We're just chatting. We're having sorry. so much fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Listen, okay. Yeah, all you like, I, I'm talking about. Okay, Mama Chris, I got, I got your email on my bed. I'm going to email you. You okay. ladies, I'm Sounds telling good. you right now. I, I am so telling you all right now. I'm not even asking you all. Email Brent, and he's going to give you my email address. I'm not asking. I am demanding. <laughs> I am being. I am doing this. My hand, the Italian. Yes, 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 yes. Please email him. He's going to give you my email address. I'm I'm saying this for a reason. Just follow me. Just yeah. follow me. Well, All you um <laughs> one two three. Okay, I got yours, Mama Chris. One two three. Okay. Yes, you three ladies. Awesome. Okay. I'm right. so glad to meet my new baby. So tell us beautiful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Please hey, do, Mama Chris. And, and I'm telling you, my pretty baby. We have to talk. You, yes. But we all th three. I want all four of you, ladies. Uh, you, please email. I got you, Mama. Chris. You other three ladies. Yeah. I need you all to get with him. Email him so he can give you my email address. Please. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. Right. We'll I, do. I, I, I demand it now, then. Okay. Have a good night. <laughs> we gotta let, we gotta let night, my ladies. son go to bed. So good night, babies. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. I so enjoyed it. Mm, bye bye. I did too. God bless you all. Same to you all. Mm -hmm. Same to you all. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks for coming on. I don't know how long I slept, but I'm... I'm I don't know. We didn't even pay attention to you anymore. <laughs> I think we were so busy, right? We didn't and know. Like... We were having fun. <laughs> <laughs> Girls' night out. That's what I yeah. Mama yeah. knows he was tired, though. Mm -hmm. I, we're just talking mm -hmm. out. We didn't even pay. We're so sorry. Okay, no, so yes. but, yeah. mm -hmm. no, no, no. I just, yeah, I need to go to bed, ladies. Mm -hmm. Okay, have a good night. Bye-bye. Right. It was always, it's always so fun. I'm telling you, my babies. Ain't that sweet? Mm -hmm. Bye, Mama Chris. Bye, all of my pretty babies. Okay. <laughs> it feels so good to hear you say that. Mm -hmm. No. Tell me. You're good. And listen, and I want you to know, I am not offended. This is just me, just. I oh don't take and I'm always over the all over the place. Don't don't oh, no please way. don't. But you, okay. you I want you to email me email him for a reason because I want you to okay. stick around me. Okay. I sure will. Mm -hmm. Okay, babe. Have a good night. You have a good night. All Bye, right. love. Bye, mama. Bye, right. babies. Love you all. Okay. Bye, bye, Brent. Thank you. Uh, good night. I'll see night. you guys later. Night. Bye, friend. Get you some sleep. I know you're like these oh, yeah. ladies are killing me. <laughs> I'm tired too. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. drifting off into sleep. I'm, yeah, I gotta go to work tomorrow. But yeah, yeah. Let him get some rest. Yeah, yeah. Mm hmm. Okay. Bye, right, babies. Okay. okay. Bye, you heard. I'll see you tomorrow. All right. Okay. Well, all right. Okay. Yeah. Are we still on? Am I? Can we get off? Yeah, yeah, we're still on. <laughs> How long did this go? I, I drifted asleep. I, oh you know, God. I'm gonna be honest. I really don't know. I, I do not. I, I, we got so engrossed in the conversation. It was so fun. I don't know, Brent. I honestly don't know how you long you were sleeping. I don't know. You said something. Okay. We had well, so God. much fun. Oh my uh, goodness, the conversation uh, was so it was so fun. I, I honestly don't know how long you were sleeping. As long as we had fun. We That's had a fun. lovely Sorry. time. Okay. All right, Sun Kissed. Have a good night. Hey everybody, have a good night. I'm going okay. to bed. You too. Thanks. I had a great time. All right, have a good night. Okay, you too. Bye now. Tell Sandy hi. Oh, good, good night. Night. I should say good night. Good morning. <laughs> okay, bye bye. Good night. All right. Good night, everybody. I'll see you guys uh, next live. Or, uh, wow, I, I'm out. I'm sorry, guys. I I need to go to sleep. But anyways, have a good night. And I'll see you on the next live or video. Have a good night. God bless you. Good night. <laughs>